I was dancing. I was I was playing the music and I was so excited about the music I forgot to turn on my mic. So sad. Anyways, what I was saying was thanks again to Kimberly Johnson for coming into the show this morning and, and starting off our guest filled week. Wednesday, Philip Bittner, Friday, Malcolm Nance. Spectacular. Uh there you go. All's well. Okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, good. Um <laughs> so uh, a couple of, couple of things right out of the gate. Uh, first of all, um, hi, chat room. How are you? Yay, audio. Yes, I know. I get it. Whatever. It, it's uh, ever since I improved the mic. Remember the old crackly mic situation that we had? Okay, I worked very hard to fix that part. And But the one thing about that setup was that I when I would push the button to go to the screen that was me, it would automate the, the microphone turning it on and stuff. And uh, this one doesn't do that. So I've got I got to find workarounds so I don't forget to do it. Um, but there you go. So, uh, thanks for the, I appreciate it. I think the dancing was a good time. And, uh, yes, Malcolm Nance will be on with us on Friday. It's going to be very exciting. I've been trying to get him on for a little bit and he's, he's gracious enough to come on the show. We'll be talking, it'll be a, it'll be a big Ukraine week. Um, because, uh, the, I mean, the story about Bakhmut is in and of itself is, I find in my own studies, as you knew, um, that as I go through all the th stuff that's happening right there, um, I, thanks, thanks, Tony. I it, intentionally so it is brutal. I appreciate that. I intend to spend more time there so that I can work on it very soon. Um, but in the meantime, um, I have been uh, in in sort of studying up and making sure that I'm on top of the, kind of the latest and greatest uh, news from Ukraine. Uh, the, there is such a muddle coming out of the Bakhmut area, and I think it's on purpose from the Ukrainian side and and desperately propagandish from the right from the Russian side that uh, it's it's a very murky thing. It's kind of like talking about uh, Chinese economic numbers, uh, you know, the the country, not people in general. Chinese economists uh, in general in the United States and uh, most countries in the West, they're very smart people, very good at their job. Interestingly enough. Inside the country, I don't know what happens. Um, hype train, level two hype train coming in there on Twitch right now. Very exciting. Very exciting. Now, uh, obviously, all right, a, a moment, if I may, before we start tonight's festivities. Uh, hunker down, kids. Uh, I may be able to skip around a little on this one, but it's a, it's good, it's a tooth bowl. Um, I'm sure some of you are familiar, if you're as... Uh, internet savvy, as I think you might be, with the term thumbnail. Yes? 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 I've been working on my thumbnails lately, if you might have noticed. Made one for this show, made one for the upcoming shows. And it's interesting to me that uh, between the, you know, the, the use of, I guess, Photoshop, if you're on the high end, or sites like uh, Canva or Envato, which are these kind of semi-automated versions of things, that you can set up a style template and then you can just crank out thumbnails all the day long. Are we familiar with the thumbnail uh, con concept? We are? Yes, indeed. Okay. So that points to the fact that if a, if a, if a, little, uh, if a, if a cute little piece of meat like myself can crank out a fairly def decent thumbnail by myself or with the help of our great CSL, um, then a big organization, a multi-million dollar, if need if indeed not multi-dozen dollar company, like RSBN, for example, should be able to, one would think, um, I should at least have a, I don't know, a, an account on Fiverr to do these things. And especially when it comes to a man, you know, when they're making, when you're making a thumbnail about, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene, obviously you're going to go straight to the, her one woman only fans that she has with one of your hosts and pick a shot off there. But if you're looking to, you know, make a thumbnail about the single greatest human being ever to live on the planet, Donald John Trump, according to you, um, I, I, at some point, if this is what you come up with, you either f secretly hate the guy or you gave up giving a shit a long time ago. I, first of all, he looks asleep or mid-stroke. It's, he's barely in the shot. 
CPAC is featured more prominently than the the than 45 here. And it's a big ad for gold and like their ad for gold and stuff. Like definitely, I think Trump is running up against their own priorities. <laughs> yeah, they just took a fucking screenshot. That's right, CSL. And that was that. That's just, eh, fuck them. And uh, I have to say, uh, I appreciate their hard work. I, I appreciate them giving us a laugh straight out of the gate. Of a, one of many, I don't doubt, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. 25% an, of adults uh, over be, 65 sorry, have lost all their teeth from teeth receding ad. gums and decaying teeth. I can't. Oh, they started the song. And now I gotta walk out here so good. Yes. Look at all these. Squirt, squirt, squirt. Little hand job right on my tie. Clap, 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 clap. Hello, everybody. Clap, clap, clap. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, hold on. I'm just gonna say, if I may, that he's gonna come to regret all the blue in the background. As it were. Um, because, well, let's just, uh, let's just jump straight, straight to it. I mean, I, I don't know why. We'll, we'll let it play while it happens. Um, but I gotta play this uh, stupid, uh, like, he's just gotta wander around the stage till the song finishes. Like, like, He's like a televangelist Hitler. It's so weird. Okay, I'll just stand here for a minute. Nope, song's not <laughs> Song's not over. Oh dear. Um, whoops, hold on. Get out of here. Um save image. There we go. Uh Hold on. I'm walking around. Uh, PE, there we go. Put it in there. Stop there. Pausing for a moment, if I may. We're going we're gonna to pause for a moment just so I can prepare something because these dum-dums just never learn. They never, ever learn. And I don't know why they never learn. I, but they should learn. They sh at this point, it, it should be self-evident. That they that they learn, but they're just not going to. Hold on, let me take this. I've got to make something real quick because I was uh, not expecting this uh, lovely bit of. Okay, it's in pictures, is it? Yes, it is. There we go. And we'll take this over here and we'll drag it and drop it in there. Yeah, that'll work. And we'll just, I guess, drag this out. There you go. And put that there. And then we'll drag it down to here. Uh, yeah, there you go. And then we go to this guy and we add a filter to that and we uh, edit filters and we add a filter and we, uh, nope, and we go to chroma key, add, we choose blue and, uh, and I guess uh, we go from here. Um, he's just going to walk around on a magical stage, um, in front of a huge group of people. Um, I, hold on. That's, uh, that's too strong a filter. We won't be able to even see him. Um, edit filters. There we go. We'll do the similarity. Turn the similarity down. Turn it up a little. There we go. Just a little bit. That should work. Hi. Hello, everybody. What's going on, everybody? He's just standing there like a complete asshole. How long has this gone? Like, does this go on? Jesus. There ain't no doubt. It's just like he has no timing. This is so fucking hilarious. God bless the duty poo. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> 
Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. It's just, uh, thank you. Well, thank you very much, and I'm thrilled to be back at CPAC with thousands of great and true American patriots, and that's what you are. Hold on. We got it. I want to start by thanking Matt and Mercedes Schlapp and everyone at the American Conservative Union. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Matt. For hosting this wonderful event. It really has been something over the years. The, the grab them by the penis uh, bumper stickers are selling like hotcakes this year. I also want to, we have so many people here. I'm going to leave out oh, some, but I, I, they'll understand. We have a lot of Congress, a lot of Senate, a lot of everything, but we'll do a few words and a few names. Diana Harshbarger, thank you, Diana, Congresswoman. Mike Collins, Elise Stefanik, I call her the rocket ship. Where's Elise? She's a rocket. Stefanik? Stefanik? Thank you, Elise. Jason Smith, friend of mine, great guy. Thank you, Jason. Great guy, so Wesley great. Hunt, Corey Mills, Dr. Ronnie Jackson. He's a doctor. He's an admiral. Where's Ronnie Jackson? He told. He said I'm the healthiest man ever to be president by far. Said if I wouldn't eat junk food, I'd live 200 years. Where is he? He's the greatest. We love you, Ronnie. Oh. He had a lot of a lot of things under his belt. Another one who's a serious character, but. He had a lot of things under his belt. Yes, he did. As a matter of fact, they called him Dr. Feelgood on a lot of those foreign trips. He would pass out Ambien and uppers uh, like a fucking chemical yo-yo trickster to anybody who wanted them on the fucking flights. What a great guy. You got to know him. He's a great guy. Matt Gates. Thank you, Matt. Really? Great guy. Great guy, great Botox, great filler, great everything. Great, you know, I wouldn't let my daughter anywhere near him if she was under 18. Now, she's too old for him now. She's fine. He's a brave guy. He's a brave guy, yes. And another brave, brave person. She started off very slow, very, very slow. <laughs> a brave person who started off very slow. These are... <laughs> like attracts like, I suppose. Oh, she... She's a low-key person, Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> well, I, that, I, I thought he was being ironic or sarcastic or cute, but no, he, he meant it. She started off pretty slow. She stayed that way, too. I mean, why? Hey, if you got a winning formula. Thank you. Thank you, Marjorie. A good location, Marjorie. <laughs> Marjorie. A friend of mine, a man who's terrific, almost won for governor of New York, could have done it, but uh, so many people have moved out of New York, it gets tougher. But he's a terrific guy, great lawyer too, and he's a strong guy, you know? He stopped somebody coming at him with a knife, I don't know. He grabbed that guy's hand, he looked pretty tough, and he drove him to the ground. Lee Zeldin, where's Lee? Where's Lee? Hi, Lee, thank you. Good job, Lee. It was a it was a key ring. West Virginia. It was a it was a it was the kind of key ring that they specifically they sell to women as self-defense devices because it looks like the the knifey parts are the ears of the cat. And you put it it looks like a cat's head and you put it on your key ring. I mean it's it's wor definitely worthwhile, but simmer down. Also, wasn't it his uh his campaign manager, everybody was like, a, a, a stupid DA got him out immediately. Um, you know, let this person out with no cash bail. Stupid, st stupid fucking, uh, like, Democrat DAs. George Soros, it turned out to be his campaign finance chair or whatever, was the DA of the area. Let's see. This is, this is pretty solid. This will this will be right. Do we have a spill? It doesn't matter. There we go. Um, Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. Patrick, thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost. Thank you, Dave. I, like, he's just filling Former time. Former right Acting now. Attorney General of the United States, Matt Whitaker. And favorite General Keith Kellogg. Very, very popular in Brazil. <laughs> Jair Bolsonaro. It's so nice. You're very popular. You just lost your election 
same way I did. And as we all know, losers totally win. Losers are the winners. Welcome, welcome, Captain Participation Trophy. Oh, look at that. Oh, great oh, look, at the, look at you getting a great honor. You fuck <laughs> off. Thank you. You, sir, are the biggest loser. Congratulations. I don't know. You beat. Is it people chanting evil? Beat all these U.S. politicians. That's uh, that's pretty good. What? And his son, who's a friend of mine, uh, Brazilian Chamber of Deputies, Eduardo Bolsonaro. Brazilian Chamber of Deputies. It's a. It's like a chamber of horrors, but it's all full of like uh, zombies that look like Barney Fife. We got a couple rules up here in Brazil. Hi, Eduardo. Great. Great job. Hi, Eduardo. Great. Great. Sitting right next to your dad. Good for you. Good for you. What are you doing? Keep your crotch away from Matt. Just got reelected. And uh, somebody <laughs> that we... Unlike his father. Really like in this room, I think. I certainly like him a lot. He had a lot of, a lot of courage. Very smart guy. James O'Keefe. Where's that? Where's that? Let's give it up for James O'Keefe, the guy who was just kicked out of his own organization. For those of you that don't know, uh, the the board of Project Veritas just bounced James O'Keefe because of misuse of funds because he was apparently using Project Veritas funds to, uh, I, 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 money to fund his dreams of being a Broadway star and doing dance videos with their money and they were apparently upset. And also a lot of their uh, like huge exposés Turned out to be shit. That too. Look at that. In the history oh. of our country. There's nobody going to even question it. Even the fake news. Look at this shit. The kid's guide to Donald Trump. Look at this. What is this? This? Look at that. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this. What? All right. Media. That's a lot of fake news back there. <laughs> and by the no, this, uh, this fucking the way, I want to thank the fire department. Look at these people. They're up the rafters. Thank you, fire department. Whatever. What the fuck? He's having flashbacks from East Palestine, Ohio. But the greatest in our history is, of course, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Oh, sorry. Uh, most important battle in our lives is taking place right now as we speak. For seven years, you and I have been engaged in an epic struggle to rescue our country from the people who hate it and want to absolutely destroy it. Yes, they want to absolutely destroy it with infrastructure. It's the sneakiest fucking thing I've ever seen. Apparently, Democrats have this sneaky plan that they're going to destroy the country by making everything safer and bigger and uh, and building more bridges and dams and waterways and protecting things and fixing roads and shit like that. It's a very, very sneaky it's the undestroy. It's the it's the reverse psychology of destruction. Um, it's a I don't know how he he spotted it. Uh, the, he's on to us. The sinister forces trying to kill America have done everything they can to stop me to silence you. To stop me to silence you. Okay, because he he and the people are one. And to turn this nation into a socialist dumping ground for criminals, junkies, Marxists, thugs, <laughs> radicals. <laughs> Did he just say junkies? Junkies. Holy shit. We're, we're going back to 1984, kids. Junkies. God damn. This is like something that was in a teleprompter of Bill O'Reilly's and <laughs> at one point. J junkies and Marxist. Oh, shit. Those <laughs> and dangerous refugees that no other country wants. No other country wants them. <laughs> Nobody wants these children. These children, these sinister junkie children. If those opposing us <laughs> what an asshole. succeed, our once beautiful USA will be a failed... Yeah, what about the dirty hippies and their dungarees? That's right. <laughs> it, you know, hooligans everywhere. Country. Rambunctious ne'er-do-wells. 
that no one will even recognize a lawless, open borders, crime-ridden, filthy communist nightmare. That's what it- <laughs> That's the dream. I mean, if you really look at the Green New Deal, <laughs> that's what everybody's <laughs> shooting for. <laughs> Don't forget the junkies. You left out. You got. You got to keep. Yes. You, the, <laughs> yes. Uh, that's Joe Biden has been running his whole life, uh, setting up things like the Violence Against Women Act and and uh, trying to set up things like the ACA so that this can be a, a communist junkie waste <laughs> wasteland. We, he, or, the, the whole Biden plan is make America. Portland again. That's right. Mappa. It's going and that's where it's going. Wait, did somebody laugh? Because that no one will even recognize a lawless, open borders, crime ridden, filthy communist nightmare. That's what it's going and that's where it's going. Yeah, somebody's just laughing. Somebody was laughing. I, he, hi, uh, person like super maggot who's new. Um, he's not kidding. He. He, well, he's lying, but he's not kidding. He's not joking. He's full of shit. Just to just to clarify. I used to say that we will never be a socialist country. I said it oftentimes. Uh-huh. I said it once at the State of the Union address, and people didn't understand what I was saying. Yeah, in general, though, I don't think it was just the socialist thing. Most of it was gibberish. But I'd shout it out loud, and I was right, because that train has passed the station long ago of socialism it never even came close to stopping frankly <laughs> oh shit we're now in a marxism state of mind a commun- a marxism state of mind <laughs> i i got that Marxism state of mind. I got the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. And we're walking down Fifth Avenue with a loaded gun. Wouldn't lose a single bit of support. I got that Marxism state of mind. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Socialism. It never even came close to stopping, Frank. No, oh, that train, it kept on chugging down the line and gave me that Marxism state of my, my, oh, <laughs> just get the fuck out of here. Frankly, we're now in a Marxism state of mind, a communist. <laughs> I'm never going to make it through this speech. <laughs> oh, God, I'm going to die. Okay. Communism state of mind. A communism state of mind. That's a different one. You, gotta, you can pick one. I mean, if you're going to do lyrics, now I'm, I got to say Marxism state of mind has the, you know, has a better ring to it, but communism state. Yeah, it flows. Com- yeah, that's a tough one. Marxism is Marxism and mind both start with an M. That works. Alliteration always great in an, in an old standard. <laughs> Which is far worse. It is. It's, it is far worse. <laughs> then what? We're a nation in decline. Our enemies are desperate to stop us because they know that we are the only ones who can stop them. They know that this room. Okay, first of all, if we're a nation in decline, why would our enemies uh, want to stop this? Wouldn't they just buy some popcorn, find a nice spot on a hill, and watch the shit burn? So important, the people. It's so important. Only you know. How about, and by the way, uh, none of you flew here because your planes were on fire as they fell out of the sky. There are no airports. Uh, I think the audience, we had a, had a much bigger turnout. It couldn't possibly be because I'm a complete waste of time and, uh, and a human fart machine, as for intellectually speaking. Uh, you know, it couldn't be that. It has to be that the roads are, you know, 
this lava spewing out of potholes that's caused by the people government. in this room. They know that we can defeat them. They know that we. Uh, I, I'd like to tell you on behalf of my friend Andy that last time he was, in fact, defeated. It. We'll defeat them, but they're not coming after me. They're coming after you, and I'm just standing in their way. That's all I'm doing. I'm standing in their way. Is that what you were doing before the speech in the middle of the song, just standing in their way? That's the, uh, I, I, I smell a book. Obviously, he's not going to write one. I smell a ghost written book. I smell a coloring book standing in the way. The only coloring book that doesn't need crayons because everything is white like it should be. <laughs> it comes with one orange crayon. <laughs> and there's only one place to use it. And that's why I'm here today. That's oh, that's why. Why I'm standing before you because we are. You're standing before them, standing in the way, because you can't sit uh, in the way. We're going to finish what we started. We started something that was a miracle. We started something that was a miracle. Uh, he didn't say mirror ball. He said miracle, I think. <laughs> he kind of just pissed it away. Miracle's kind of an important word in this thing. I'm going to be here all fucking night, aren't I? This is terrible. We're going to complete the mission. We're going to see this battle through to ultimate victory. Also, other analogies to unfinished business. That, and I can't use finish the job because Biden already took that. And now I've got to take all these second tier versions of finish the job. We're going to. I, by the way, the, Biden did that on purpose. Just so you know, they knew he was floating this like finish the job idea. So they grabbed it first. That's not even going to be what they use when they get close to the the actual election. The Biden campaign. They're just using it up now. To make America great again. <laughs> All right. He's doing the whole, like, do the Mussolini, Mussolini stance. It hides your, your nunt. Mm. He does it so much, he starts to look like Carl from Sling Blade. I'm here to make America great again. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that I want... <laughs> We're gonna... I got my health care plan. I'm gonna have it in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be 47, mm -hmm. when I'm 74. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With you at my Yabba dabba. Side, we will demolish the deep state. We We're going to de demolish the deep state. We're going to stomp the State Department. We're going to trounce traffic. Across the, I don't what I I don't have any. We'll expel the the uh, Europeans. No, the the explanations. It will expel the war mongers. War mongers. <laughs> okay, first of all, hey, anybody remember when I said a couple weeks ago when the Russians were floating war monger to be used against the left uh, as a way to uh, <laughs> I'm Mussolini and. Uh, with a full typo, and I'm gonna hold my face up to hide my nunt. Um, remember I told you about watch out for warmonger. Yeah, this is this is when it jumps the shark. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel. The war mongers. War mongers. <laughs> not that. It's not that. It's not that complicated. <laughs> word. They are people that that monger war. They take a perfectly good war and they monger it up. Don't get it. Although <laughs> they don't get it. Oh, in some cases they get it. They... 
What? Wait. <laughs> Whore mongers. Wait. And then they what? Listen to this shit. We will expel the yeah. war mongers. They are people that don't get it, although in some cases they get it. They get it for their wallets. But we can't do that. We can't let that happen. We will drop. They get it for their wallets. <laughs> so he's basically saying you got you can't argue. They're good businessmen. I, as you know, warmonger is a growth industry. I wish I'd gotten into that instead of just uh, living off my dad's coattails till I burned the company. Five out the globalists. We will cast out the communists. Cast out the communists. We, we aren't you going to gaslight the globalists or uh, get, gather the get, gather a gaggle of globalists and give them hell? We will throw off the political class that hates our country. They actually hate our country. We'll throw off the political class that hates our country. Okay, and that would be who? No walls, no borders, bad elections, no voter ID. Yes, that's right. Uh, Democrats want um, every house as part of the Green New Deal. Houses can have floors, roofs, no walls, and nothing to keep the roof up because that's a, it causes climate change. We will beat the Democrats. We will rout the fake news media. We will expose and appropriately deal with the rhinos. We will, dis we will dispose and appropriately deal with? You mean dispose of? Like murder? What the shit? We will evict Joe Biden from the White House. <laughs> He's still stung over the fact that everybody was going, yeah, if he doesn't leave, we're going to evict him. Like, he's still stung about the fact that he had to leave. And we will liberate America from these villains and scoundrels once and for all. Oh, yes. When we started this journey, a journey like there has never been before, there's never been anything like this. There's never been a journey like this, except maybe... <clears throat> journey, the band Journey. I'm going to go with Journey. This is the Donner Party. And then, yeah. We had a Republican Party that was ruled by freaks, neocons, <laughs> globalists, open border zealots. Uh, uh, all right. He said, freak, we got freaks. We got junkies. We're going to have to need a new bingo card for this shit at some point. What the shit? And fools. But we are never going back to the. No, we're never going back to the Republican Party. Tonight I announce I'm joining the Forward Party. Andrew Yang, come on out. The party of Paul Ryan, Carl Rove, and Jeb Bush. Carl call, call Rove. Okay. Jeb Bush just uh, endorsed DeSantis. <laughs> yes, yes, please. Applaud this. Yes. Fight amongst yourselves. Please continue. We're not going back to people that want to destroy our great social security system. Our, we're going to get rid of socialism. America will never be socialist or socialism, but they will, we will stop anyone who gets, wants to get rid of social security. Social, it, which is an, not an ism, but... Even some in our own party, I wonder who that might be, <laughs> that want to raise the minimum age of Social Security to 70, 75, or even 80 in some cases. In, yes, 80 in some cases, but only if you can bench pe press over 250 pounds at 65 years old. They figure that, you know, if you can do that. And that are out to. What was that? Ah! Cut Medicare to a level that. It will no longer be recognizable. As even meta or care or medical or caring. And when it that was their original thought, that's what they always come back to. Remember that. You have to remember that. When that was their original thought, we always have to come back to that. Oh, you mean like when you were allegedly pro-choice forever? until you decided to run for president? Always go back. Uh, whatever someone has said, even if they change their mind, apologize, learn new information, they never change. That's, that applies to everyone, which is why you should vote for me, because I've learned nothing. 
You heard it here first. <laughs> we are never going what, what, what? back to a party that wants to give unlimited money to fight foreign wars that are endless wars, that are stupid wars. That are endless wars, that are stupid wars. By the way, uh, Biden ended Afghanistan, not this clown. But at the same time, demands that we cut veterans benefits and retirement benefits at home. Our soldiers will no longer live in the streets of our city. We what city is that? Cities, you mean? I, I'm fairly sure, certain uh, most major cities have some homeless vets. And that's, you know, uh, the, the biggest um, advancements made against um, veteran homelessness was during the Obama administration. Just saying. We have cities where... Our soldiers, our great soldiers, are living on concrete. They're living on asphalt. <laughs> They're in the middle of the road. They don't even sleep. They're not even allowed to sleep on the sidewalk. The other homeless junkies, communist Marxist junkie homeless that live on the side. They've claimed the home, the, their home is on the sidewalk. They make our veterans sleep on broken yellow lines. We will take care of our soldiers. There has never been a time like this. Weren't you president for four fucking years already? Illegal immigrants come in and we house them in the Waldorf Astoria and many other of the greatest hotels anywhere in the world. <laughs> what? But our soldiers, we do nothing for them. We do nothing for them. Nothing. That's right. America, fuck you. You've never done anything for your soldiers. You've never tried to manage. As a matter of fact, they, I mean, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of seeing all those billboards encouraging veteran suicide. Paid for with my tax dollars. They sleep out at night and they freeze. <laughs> what the fuck? They freeze in the cold. Oh, okay, good. I thought they were freezing in the heat. That was my mistake. I like it. And I guess anything can happen. And they die in the heat. Oh, so they, they didn't freeze to death in the cold. I see. So, oh, so they probably bundled up. And then the next day it was hot and they forgot to take off all the coats and they burst into flames. Good fucking Lord. Well, people that came into our country illegally are in beautiful hotel suites, perhaps watching us on television right now. Mm. And I'm being watching me get translated into Portuguese. It's out. <laughs> okay, first of all, um, for the record, in case anybody, uh, veteran suicides and veteran homelessness are serious issues for serious thinking people. This is horseshit. This is the weaponization of empathy. This motherfucker was president for four fucking years. If he had some sort of Marshall plan to guarantee that veterans would never be homeless again, he had four fucking years to do it. If he'd even attempted it to do something profound to handle the, the, the veteran homelessness in this fucking country, besides, by the way, taking credit for the, um, for the veterans, the VA Choice Act, of 2014, which seems to be his biggest accomplishment is one that happened that Obama signed. If, if in the four years that he, if he did something where he's like, today we announce a, a citywide uh, building project where we near military bases, we are going to buy extra land and all of our homeless vets who have served and any ho any veteran that achieves, you know, or that has experiences like, you know, like, financial wreckage or can't or bankruptcy or any of these things and needs a place to live as a veteran you will have that right you and your family will there will be these like two-bedroom apartments everywhere if we need a house for a family we will these will be different sites but overall this is what we're going to do we're going to take a chunk of our military bases and and uh in an unsecure area because these guys aren't service members anymore we're going to build them an apartment building just for vets if you serve in war and you just don't have anything afterwards or you need it ever, it's there for you. I I, I have to think right now, I, I just came up with a, a, a great fucking idea. As a matter of fact, 
Um, I I think that's what we should do. You're welcome. And I have I wasn't even president for four years with people asking me every fucking day, what do we want to do today, boss? And having the entire U.S. government to do it with. What a lazy fuck. He was golfing. This motherfucker, by the way, anybody, uh, you know, one of the greatest George Carlin bits, and this is a very difficult choice to make, um, is, is his bit about how golf, we should turn golf courses into ha housing for the homeless. And uh, yeah, I'm sure Trump would have signed right off on that. We were taking care of our soldiers just a short while ago. And they just instantly became homeless when you lost your job. But we don't do that anymore. <laughs> yes, we've canceled the VA. Yeah, that's uh, we don't do that anymore. We don't give a shit about our veterans ever. But we'll start doing it again. Our soldiers are very special to us. Like, I honestly, that's just gibberish. What a wonderful time. Uh, uh, let's see. Moms Russo says, I work with displaced veterans and it's so difficult to find them proper housing. I know. Exactly. Uh, do, Moms Russo, do you think that would be a possible solution? Where you have a section for older retirees, you have a section where people can get help if they have addiction issues, but also a section where you can, it's like work housing and you try to, you help them with a work program. They can live there for free as a veteran and then get a job and then go find a place or whatever. And then they can use it as a, you know, the fact that they were there for a certain amount of time, they can earn marks that are effectively the equivalent of a credit score over the time that they were there. I'm just saying. Town in Ohio has difficulty. We are going to take care of that town, that city, that village prior to worrying about the rest of the world. We're taking care of the problems of the rest of the world that they're not taking care of themselves. They have us put up the money. Oh, you mean like Saudi Arabia? You know what I'm talking about. Saudi Arabia? If you look at Ukraine, and we all feel so badly about it, but why is... Well, yeah, he means because Russia's losing. Isn't NATO putting up dollar for dollar with us? Well, because uh, largely they're giving gear. And so we don't have to give our gear, at, like the leopard tanks, for example. That that's an equivalence. There you go, because they they're just giving what they would actually use for war. We've got plenty of. Action. We put up 140 billion dollars, mm -hmm. and they yes, that we will get back. Put up just a tiny fraction of that, and you know we all want to see success, but it's far more important to them than it is to us because of that location. We are never going to be a country ruled by entrenched. Political dynasties in both parties, rotten special interests, China-loving politicians, of which... Well, by the way, there, he, he's, he's right when he says political dynasties because none of his sons are ever going to get anywhere near elected office. There are many. You or his daughter. Listening to this, Mitch McConnell, are you listening? By the way, don't forget to like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show. I forgot to say all that stuff because I, my mic was turned off at the beginning. So, hi, welcome. Ta -da. And a militant left-wing news media that's either frightened of telling the truth or is truly evil and bad. I don't know. I think, I think in many ways they're frightened. But you never... Yes, they're so frightened. They're just scared. That's Fox is just scared. They're not evil. Fox is still our friend. I... I... I want to be on those shows, so I think they're just frightened. We really know which. We are not going back to this mindset. Not now, not ever. What mindset would that be? Not ever. No, no, not ever. The rhino mindset, I guess. And thank you, Mark Levin, for being here tonight. Thank you very much. And Julie. Thank you. You forgot to mention them earlier, I guess. Mr. Producer. Thank you, Mark. Very important voice. Stay healthy, Mark. We can't lose you. Just stay healthy. Stay healthy, Mark. We're not going to lose you. In 20... Uh, 
Um, great. So we just found out that Mark Levin apparently has medical problems or that Trump thinks he's fat and he's going to die. And he just kind of outed him as sick on, on the stage of CPAC. Adorable. 16, we took away the power of this corrupt political class. And gave it to a, a bigger one, a more corrupt than any, I didn't think even, than no one even has ever even thought possible. And we did more in four years than any administration in the history of our country. If you look at... Well, in terms of golf. That's what we do. That's what we do. We shut down the illegal foreign invasion at our borders. And, and I was achieved the most secure border in U.S. history. We deported illegal criminal aliens by the tens of thousands. Yeah, uh, Obama still holds the record. MS-13, taking them out by the thousands. We set records every single week. We were cleaning up our country. I smashed the false idols of the free trade fanatics. These are fools, or they're getting very rich. Probably the second. Free trade fanatic fools who are getting very rich, as fools are wont to do. And left the China lobby reeling from our historic tariffs and taxes that we charge them, bringing in hundreds of billions of dollars pouring into That's our shit. treasury from China. Thank you very much, China. <laughs> when no other president had. Oh my God! They, like, is, is it is it just me or is this weird like fade on the end of everything? Oh my my is my mic okay? Gotten even 10 cents. Not one president got anything from them. Our trade. Again, what the fuck are you talking about? Deficits were five, six, seven hundred billion dollars a year. Right. Because we made trillions on the stuff that they built there. Because. Fuck. Billion. Think of it. Dollars a year. Think of billions. Think of it. A word I've never even really experienced. I've said it a lot, but I don't know what it means. Yeah. Not sustainable by any country. They built their military, and they have a very powerful military with the money that we gave them. How stupid are we? I was the only president in modern... Uh, the only president in modern history whose ties, hats, buttons, flags, uh, mugs were all made in China. How stupid were we? My, the Literally, MAGA hats paid for some of the bullets in Chinese guns by my own standard. Modern history who did not have... Any new wars? No new wars. I finished some old ones. I finished some old ones. Yeah, you know, I, I dusted them off in the tail end. I finished some old ones. You didn't finish Afghanistan, that's for fucking sure. And Syria, he just dropped everything and left and gave shit to the Russians. <laughs> And by the way, one of the reasons is, is because he, he was trying to build a hotel in the, in the capital city of every single one of our adversaries. Remember when the Democrats and my Republican opponents would often look at me during the debates or whatever, and they'd say, uh, no, no, he's going to bring us into World War III. Because it's a personality type. They said I had the person. No, I had the personality type that kept us out of wars because. Oh, by the way, uh, just for the record, um, his relationship with Vladimir Putin and his like lubing that entire circumstance, undercutting NATO, undercutting Ukraine while he was in office, set the path, set the time scale for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. That was the intent. That's what he was there for on, on a geopolitical it, mission for Russia in that regard. That was part of his job. You get to the point where either in the beginning of your second term or or at some point, probably in the first year of it, you can just, we're getting out of NATO. We're just going to leave NATO and we're not going to honor Article 5 anymore. It's not necessary. Then Russia could attack. That was his, that was what he was there for. So the idea that he didn't have one in his first four years because he was playing footsie with these fuckers and setting up his second term where he, they would run roughshod over shit. The, the world would have to de deal with it like a pulled off Band-Aid and just kind of, well, shit, it's too late to do anything. So we got to settle in like Georgia or Chechnya and give Russia that one giant leap forward. That's what he was there for. People knew that they weren't going to mess around with it. 
That's why I rebuilt our military. We were yeah, it's not like the budget's been cut in the military since he We're left. strong, we were safe, and I told... We were sick, we were dying, we were broke. Delinquent foreign nations, they were delinquent. They weren't paying That's their bills. That if they wanted our protection, they had to pay up and they had to pay up now. And they did. They paid $450 billion as soon as I said, no, I won't be protecting you if you don't pay. By the way, um, he thought they were going to say, no, we can't. He was very upset, as was Vladimir Putin, when NATO actually went, oh, shit, okay. <laughs> they were expecting them to go, well, then we're not, you know, then NATO d in, shouldn't exist because if we're not all in this together, that's what they were hoping for. They were hoping that, and Germany was going to help, but that was the wedge. We truly had a policy of peace through strength. This was a serious, powerful policy, and we didn't have to lose our loved ones fighting wars in countries that nobody's ever heard of. I stood firm against... We've, we've heard of a lot of these countries. I'm just saying, just because you've never heard of them, even though you were president for four fucking years. The forces of anarchy and decay. I arrested the Marxists who toppled statues of our great heroes in Washington, D.C. Using a law that already existed, did you? Were you gentle when you cuffed them? Did you? Did you not help them lower their head when they got in the car? Just you really give them what for? Like you said, we arrested them. Oh, we did. I'm sorry. Like what? Who? You and Jared. They were knocking down the most beautiful artwork, the most beautiful statues of great heroes. They didn't even know who they were doing. They just wanted anarchy, and I passed and signed an executive order. Anybody that does that. I passed and signed an executive. So did you, I, I presume then you ate the executive order and then eight hours later you passed the executive order and then you what, wiped the shit off and signed it? Gets 10 years in jail with no negotiation. It's not 10, but it turns into three months. And it's an incredible thing that stopped right away. You know, they were heading to the Jefferson Memorial, they wanted to take out Thomas Jefferson. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think we're going to let that happen. But we passed. No, it's interesting that none of those attacks happened while Biden is president. Isn't that weird? I, I would have thought he would have, wouldn't he have agreed with them and helped them do it and go down there, him and Kamala with a couple of hammers. Said it was a very old law and we found it. One of my very good legal people, along with Stephen Miller, they found it. They said, sir, I don't know if you want to try and bring this back. I said, I do. I don't know if you want to bring this back. You mean, you don't bring back a law that's on the books. What the, it, it never got repealed. And he, basically he signed, it, some, they told him about it. He signed an executive order saying the same thing and everybody was like, it's already a law, fuckhead. As soon as we passed it, that was the end. They just stopped, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, they stopped exactly when the riots stopped. Miracle. We banned transgender insanity from our military. Yes, just the insanity part, you know. And signed the world's first. Look at that, that one guy standing. Yeah! I, the last thing I want to see when I'm watching my tranny only fans is camo. Right, guy? Where'd, you, where'd everybody go? First ban on critical race theory. <laughs> Thank you, Carlotta, for the gifted subs. And by the way, thanks for the super chats, folks. Uh, um, oh my gosh, LM. Thank you so much. And Jan, bless you. And uh, Francie, that was really sweet, LM. Oh my gosh. And uh, Dennis, thanks. What a pumpkin head. Pumpkin head is a great movie, I would just like to say. Thanks for bringing that up. Now I gotta go watch it again. And Lance Hendrickson, uh, an American treasure. Just saying. Teresa, thank you. Um, and Francie, thank you for the gifted subs. And Ninka Crinkles, thank you for the gifted subs. You guys are wonderful. Robert, thanks so much. And away we go. Long before anybody had even heard of the term, it was all banned. Everything was good. It, it was all banned. Everything was good. Thank God we don't have cancel culture. When Biden came back in, this guy came in and he put everything right back in place where it was. We were paying these people hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in salary among our highest paid people 
to teach all of this nonsense to our military yet. But it was all out. It was all done. There's only one president in history who has ever taken on the entire corrupt establishment. Yeah, I thought I thought making Harry Styles a, a five-star general just by executive order was a bad move on Biden's part. I mean, mostly because he's not American. Establishment in Washington. And when we win in 2024, we will do it again even stronger, faster, and better because... Because now I know what a fuck up I was and I know not to hire all the people that people told me to hire and I'm just going to go with my gut. It's going to be me and Cash Patel and Chat GPT and fuck it. <laughs> These people are going to be very disappointed. <laughs> By the way, I, I also think uh, it's it's better that they... Uh, didn't go with a big Odin sign this time and went just straight with a, with a, I guess a prolapsed ball sack. <laughs> the whole stage represents Trump's own old saggy balls. <laughs> because now I am experienced and I know the... <laughs> Oh, my God. Fuck you. Uh, Trump of 2023, I'd like to introduce you to Trump of 2015, who said that people who spend time in Washington, D.C., get caught up into it and think they know everything and they don't know shit because you live in the real world and the best thing you can do is stay away from Washington. People of Washington, I didn't know them. I was from New York. I only came here 17 times, they said. I read that in the fake news, so probably it's not true, but it's the best I could do. And I never stayed over. I was from New York, but I now know the good ones. Also, by the way, why do you get points for never staying the night? Is that just a, is that just left over from his divorce proceeding? The bad ones, the weak one. I never even stayed the night. She gave me a handy in the elevator and, and it was not, I, I have to tell you, she was not into it. Who's the strong ones? I know them all. I know the people that have to do the job and can do the job. A lot of them. Yeah, that's, uh, I remember you saying that before. And then all those people got fired and you said they were probably Democrats and only got you coffee and they all did illegal shit and they were... I'm yeah. in this room right now. And as I did... He's promising them all cabinet positions. Matt Schlapp, you're going to be a fantastic uh, head of uh, Oval Office HR. You get to interview strong, strapping men all day. For four incredible years, I will put America first every single time, every single day. Except the days he's golfing, of course. I mean, but I mean, be fair, be fair. <laughs> Look, he got a standing ovation from Matt Gates. And th that dude over there, the old guy with the mustache, he's from something. And then I think this is one of his own security detail. And this lady, there is no way she doesn't love Trump. Straight from the villages. I drove. I'm not standing up every time. Okay? Okay? I'm not standing up every time. From the beginning, we have been attacked by a sick and sinister opposition. The radical mm -hmm. left communists, the bureaucrats. The fake news media, the big money, special interests, the corrupt Democrat prosecutors. Oh, they're after me for so many things. Uh, well, they found you that you did a, so many things, and now they've got to address them. Oh, those prosecutors. Some are racist. Some hate. <laughs> yes, the black ones are especially very racist. It's amazing how just how racist the black ones can be. Hate our country. They all hate me. They'll get me for anything, anything. Well, it obviously, you know, the only reason they can get you for anything is because you've done so much criming that uh, there's a lot of it just laying around. Thank you, Judy. You put a comma in this paragraph. Why did you do that? I don't really know. Uh, yeah, you put it, that comma, in a, in a number that, depending on where the comma is, is either 100,000 or a million. That's fraud, fucko. The partisan and often corrupt. By the way, that's that's the defense is like the movement of a comma when it comes to money. 
and he can't get off that. He brings it up every corrupt time. Intelligence agencies, the George Soros money machine that spends a lot of money on the prosecutors, by the way. The Antifa thugs. And junkies. Who are allowed to roam the streets while we have people that in many cases are great patriots, great, great patriots, saying prayers every night, playing our national anthem every day, and they're sitting in a jail nearby, rotting away. Rotting away. He's talking about the Jan Sixers. They say prayers every night, they sing the national anthem every morning, and then they masturbate feverishly into each other's mashed potatoes while telling each other stories about how they met me and, and touched the, the butt of the big golden idol that's here again. It's beautiful. Give it up. And being treated so unfairly like nobody's probably ever been treated in this country before, except maybe me. <laughs> and Marjorie, you've been so fantastic on that issue. Where's Marjorie? You've been so fantastic on that issue. Yeah, she's done great work. How has it changed the outcome for those folks? It hasn't. They're still in jail. And Elise and Matt. People that love our country, people that love our country have been so great on that issue. And the perverts who use the names of Washington and Lincoln to buy millions of dollars in ads to say bad, libelous, and incorrect things about. Oh, somebody, somebody stood up or was like playing music or something? Oh, <laughs> yeah, somebody, somebody like, uh, somebody started, uh, protesting and they played music to cover it. Yeah, well, get out of here. We appreciate free speech in this country. Go back to where you're not allowed to speak freely, you commie thing. <laughs> While I stand here on this giant distended ball. I didn't know this was a rally, Matt. <laughs> it really is a rally when you, uh, by the way, thank you for that beautiful straw poll. That was a big win. Thank you. I think he only took 55%. I think he's down. <laughs> Our enemies are lunatics and maniacs. They oh, that's sweet. Thanks for noticing. And I, I, yeah, I thought he hadn't seen my show in a long time. And yet, now it's, 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 it's very flattering. I'm just saying. I cannot stand that... They do not own me. I don't need them. I don't need anything about them. I don't need their money. They can. I don't need anything about them. They cannot steer me. They cannot shake me. And they will never, ever control me. Well, you don't shake. You kind of, you kind of jiggle, quite frankly. It's not and they will never, ever, therefore, control you. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Bolsonaro stands up and applauds. Well, he's basically there trying to drum up funds for an attack on Brazil. At the end of the day, anyone else will be intimidated, bought off, blackmailed, or ripped to shreds. Yeah, I mean, they'll just get chucked into a wood chipper. I alone will never retreat, and that is why we must stand together and me with charge. We have and me with charge? Yes. We do. We have to stand together and me with charge and eat uh, something charred. What? Door ripped to shreds. Mm -hmm. I alone will never retreat, and that is why we must stand together and me with charge. We have to charge. Full. We do have to charge. We can't. I don't carry cash these days. Full speed ahead. You know I. Don't we have to charge. Full, me with charge. Full speed ahead. Me both fired up. Me to do sir. Me to gonna be the president and number 47. A beautiful life before I did this. <laughs> I lived in luxury, I had everything. And da, 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 da. People said to me, Are you sure you want to do it, sir? I said, Oh, this will be so amazing. <laughs> what the hell did you get me into? 
I didn't know the word subpoena. I didn't know the word grand jury. Those were bullshit. It's grand jury. I didn't know that they want to lynch you for doing nothing wrong. I didn't know they want to. Whoa. Whoa. Is that what they want to do to you? They want to lynch him for doing nothing wrong. I got news for you, fucko. Uh, People would be quite satisfied with you just sitting in a gray box for a long time. They'll lynch you for doing a great job. They'll lynch you for doing a great job. He's just going to throw around the word lynch. Just like it's nothing. I didn't know they want to put you away because your poll numbers are better than anybody they've seen in years. Yeah, that's why. It couldn't possibly be the fraud. And then they go with the disinformation campaign. First of all, we're leading every Republican by massive numbers. And very importantly, perhaps more importantly, we're leading Biden by a lot. And we're leading Kamala by a lot. If she runs by herself, you mean? And every time the polls go up higher and higher, the prosecutors get crazier and crazier. We got to stop these guys. These guys, it's just you, fucko. Does we have to stop? By the way, this is him trying to group other people into his crimes. Like, I'm not criming this by myself. It was Weiselberg. Trump now, we got to stop him now because we can't stop him at the ballot box. You know, they tried that in 20. 20- no, it, they, they, they did last time. They did stop you at the ballot. They precisely did that. 16, how did that work out? Not too good. 2020, it got better. But then, of course, people knew you by then. And we actually, and I have to say this, I hope Fox doesn't turn off, but we did much better in 2020 than we did in 2016. <laughs> much better. Much better. But we have no choice. If we don't do this, our country will be lost forever. Forever. People are tired of rhinos and globalists. They They want to see Jews. America first. That's what they want. It's not too complicated. This is the final battle. They know it. I know it. You know it. Everybody knows it. This is it. This is the final battle. If I don't win this, if I'm not president, America, this piece of shit little country will never be good. You just don't have it in you. Unless I'm running things, you people are garbage. Either they win Either. or we win. That's Yeah, that's generally how elections work. If you want to get technical. And if they win, we no longer have a country. And I promise. That's right. It's not even. They did win. We still have a country. I'm just saying. We, you said this last time and we do still. We do still have a country. I mean, I've seen more concerts in the last year than I see that I had seen in the previous five. So I promise you this. Okay. If you put me back in the White House, that beautiful building, but I live in very beautiful buildings. It's not that reason. <laughs> yeah, I don't need the digs. OK, beautiful. That building wasn't the easiest building to live in with what I was put through. And you know, I get a lot of credit. A lot of people say, how do you do it, sir? No, they don't. A lot of people don't say that. I had a man come up to me the other day. He said, you must be the most honest person the other day. That other day was six fucking years ago. One of the toughest, strongest people that you can imagine. You all know his name, big businessman, a lot of money, a lot of success. Oh, sorry. The dude is asking me a very important question in a super chat. What's your favorite song to cover? Uh, and thank you, Judy, as well. Um, I don't, I don't have a favorite one. My favorite um, in Nerd Halen, the Unchained, is in many ways the most fun. Like it, I feel like an engine starting in my groin when it starts. Or, oh no, somebody get me a doctor. Yeah, super fun. Somebody, yeah, just dancing to that is fun. That riff, god damn, off as hell. I said, could I ask you a question, President? What well, friend of mine used to. A friend of mine I ran into a couple of days ago asked me, this is such bullshit. Call me Donald, now he calls me president. Because he's a, because you make him? Because you're a lunatic? Could I ask you a question, president? What? How do you do it? How do you do it? Every day they send you subpoenas. Every day they're after you. They're looking to take you down at levels that nobody's ever put up with before. You poor, poor man. How do you... How do you live as a martyr? Seven years I've gone through this. 
We beat them all. But he continues. And he said to me, seriously, how do you do it? I could never do it. This is one of the toughest guys. I said, maybe you could. He said, nope, I couldn't do it. He's, he's very tough. Not tough enough to still call me by my first name, even though we were friends, and uh, like weak enough to kowtow and call me president. Not Mr. President or President Trump, but mi- just calls me president. I couldn't get out of bed in the morning, but I do it for you, and that's what I'm doing it for. I do it for you. Everything I do, I do for you. Yeah, huh? Look at that the woman going, thank you in sign language, letting him know, blessings be, blessings be. <laughs> now, by the way, not seeing a lot of the, uh, the Q fingers these days. That was, that didn't live. <laughs> Shit. They're yelling, uh, we love Trump and USA at the same time, and it sounds like USO. Thank you. Ye left flump at this point. Very much. Ye left flump. Ye left flump. And if you put hashtag ye left flump. Be back in the White House. Their reign is over. Their reign will be over. And they know it. And America will be a free nation once again. We're not a free nation right now. We no. don't have free press. We don't have free anything. No, we don't have. Tw- you can't get. A f- There's no such thing as a free lunch anymore. The communists got rid of that. The communists hate anything that's free. <laughs> These are the worst Marxists I've ever seen. They're apparently all concerned with the stock market. 2016, I declared, I am your voice. Today, I add, I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who have been. I am your warrior. I am your justice. Been wronged and betrayed. I am your retribution. I am your retribution. Oh, fuck you. I am. It says retribution. I am your retribution. I will enact revenge upon people you don't like. Whoever canceled Duck Dynasty, I'm going to send them to Gitmo. I am, uh... Yes, I am the warrior. Not gonna let this happen. No, not gonna let, not gonna let it happen. I'm gonna retribute their ass off. I'm gonna retribute it. I'm going to retribute it. <laughs> Only a few people need retribution. Some of them are sitting like I'm good. Not gonna let it happen. Not gonna let happen what I said I would do. I'm your warrior, I'm your justice, I'm your retribution, I'm not going to let it happen. I will totally obliterate the deep state. Totally, I'm going to knock out the deep state. I didn't even know what it was when I came in there, and now I know exactly where they parked their Mercedes. I will fire. (laughs) They love that deep state word, look at that. (laughs) They love it when I say deep state, I don't even know what the fuck they is. Again, uh, for the record, there is no deep state. He's just talking about anybody who works in government who doesn't get elected, who's either appointed or hired. They don't control the government. Uh, Again, just because he's a fuck up. You you notice how when like Biden's in office or or, uh, even George Bush um, or Obama or Clinton or, you know, or Reagan The deep state snaps to and does whatever the fuck they want, apparently. But as soon as Trump gets in, the deep state stops him because they can't have, they can't, they don't like his, how much he golfs. I don't know. I think maybe they had another uh, outburst. Thank you. I will fire the unelected bureaucrats and shadow forces. The shadow forces. Oh, my God. Will you use Space Force to kill the shadow force? Will it be the battle among Space Force versus Shadow Force? I, I want... Can I be in Shadow Force? Can we do that? I mean, I'm wearing all black. I've got a... Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. There's a man coming around taking names. And he doesn't need fortune. Or fame. 
he rides on a big black horse. And he's the colonel of the shadow force. Sorry, it just got weird there. Who have weaponized. I am, uh, hello, I'm Shadow Force. Is our justice. Is that any relation to Shadow Stevens? Probably. System like it has never been weaponized before. Sick. <laughs> they have. Oh, it's sick. Like, of all the weaponizations I've seen, this is the worst weaponization I've ever weaponized. These are sick people. They're so sick people. They're sick. They're sick, crazy people. They're sick and crazy. And what you do with sick people is you put them down like old yeller. I will put the people back in charge of this country again. The people will be back in charge of our country. And by people, he means Wilbur Ross. And Saudis are people. Vladimir Putin is a people. He's, notice he's being fairly vague. Not you people. The Biden administration. Notice he didn't say, I will put you people back in charge. He just said people. The is the most corrupt administration in American history. It's so true. If you read that, it's a sentence. It's written down, so it must be true. Hunter Biden is a criminal and nothing happened to him. Nothing happened. Joe Biden is a criminal and nothing ever seems to happen to him. Well, no, that's not true. A lot, a lot happens to him. I mean, he's busy all the time signing bills you said you would pass but couldn't. Just saying. Because, you know, you know, say what you want, but the Democrats stick together. Right. Yep. That's that's the thing. We've never had a problem on the Democratic side with messaging or co or group cohesion. That's never been an issue. I mean, look how everybody jumped behind Hillary instantaneously. Say what you will about Democrats, but, but what the fuck? They don't have Mitt Romney. They don't have guys like that. They they stick together. How's Mitt Romney doing? Not too good. Not too good. I well, he is the Senate minority leader. You can name plenty of others, too. Well, go at it, dude. Don't leave them out. Don't leave them hanging. They want to know who's the... I mean, they all know Mitch McConnell's name. You're not, you've are not. you said it a couple of times already. And you can't say Paul Ryan because he's he works at Fox now. He's not even in there. Who in office should these people hate? Let them know. But they do stick together, whether you like them or not, and many of us don't, but maybe someday we get together. You know, a question was asked of me. Uh-huh. Sir, how do you do it? How do you stick Just together? before COVID came in. Yeah, just before COVID came in? You mean when you were screaming at the Fed to lower interest rates below zero so that uh, to stave off a, an incoming recession that everybody told you would happen because of your unpaid for tax cuts? They said... The country is coming together. Do you think this is real? And I said to myself, it is real. It's amazing. I was getting calls from radical left people, the nicest calls. It's amazing because we had the best employment numbers in history. We had the best. No, you don't. Like, we literally have the best employment figures since the, since the 60s now. Best economy in history. We not again, not even close to true. We were lapping China. China was supposed to have taken over as the world's largest economy, and we were actually increasing at a level that nobody thought possible. We were doing great. And then China attacked me with a bioweapon, and I thought, spend six months telling them everybody, every, every, tell everybody everything's fine. People are like, sir, aren't you worried that the Chinese may have created this virus to actually attack you? Like, no, I have a, we're, we have a signing ceremony in a couple of days for a, a deal that I'm doing with them. No. And wouldn't. then you had COVID come in and a lot of things. Did it? Did we? It had to happen and we did a great job. We never got the credit for that job, but we did a great job with COVID and then gave back something very strong. But we were really bringing this country together. Had COVID not come in, I think you would have had a much different, because a lot of people want to know, can we all get along together? And I, if I didn't have that experience, I would say no, because the, you know, the thought process so do, is so different. But we were starting yeah. to really get along. Everybody and then was. we had the disaster as the, you know as I happened? call it, the China virus, because I want to be, I want to be open and I want to be, I want to be accurate. They finally went full screen. But Biden openly held back a billion dollar taxpayer, all taxpayer money. Hold on. For the government of Ukraine, remember he said, until they fired a prosecutor when they fired that prosecutor. And this prosecutor was after Hunter and the company that. No, he wasn't. 
He was at, he would not prosecute Russians who were undermining the economy of Ukraine. Was paying him a fortune of money. Remember Joe Biden? A fortune of money. I don't know if you know this. It's like a murder of crows. A fortune of money. Now, uh, far be it for me to criticize how he speaks of cash, because obviously he's rich and I'm a comedian. He stood up and said, and I looked at them and I said, you're not getting that billion dollars. You're not, yeah, until you get rid of the, I can't believe he did that. Can you imagine if I did that? Uh, yes, I can. As a matter of fact, the problem is uh, Biden was doing it to show that he could get tough jobs done for the administration and for the world. He was touting it. He was bragging about his bona fides. You would do it and be stupid. That would, like the equivalent is, is I don't know why it would be Russia. I wouldn't be here right now, I suspect. And nobody picks it up. No nope. picks it up. He, it was on stage at a forum. You didn't catch him on fucking tape whispering it to someone. Nobody wants to pick it up. It doesn't get any worse. Doesn't get any worse than that. Although maybe it, it doesn't. It does. It's called the laptop from L. That gets worse. And it does it though. And yet they go after me over and over again about something that's not even a crime. They make up Russia, 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 which was a plan made up by crooked Hillary Clinton, Adam Shifty Schiff, and the Democrats, the DNC. They then made up. Yeah, it wasn't made up, by the way. It wasn't made up. And anybody who still uses Russiagate as a phrase is, is strictly saying it to defend him, period. Uh, Russiagate is a Trump defense term. Um, it's meant to mock the idea of it. Nobody, like, I, I mean, I didn't call it Russiagate back then anyways, but the people who are calling it that now, specifically like Jimmy Dore and that crowd, they're doing it to protect this fucker. A fake phone. And they're lying. Phone call. They took a phone call that was perfect and they pretended that I said things that weren't even in there. They actually imitated. Remember Schiff, he stood up in Congress and he repeated the call like I was a gangster. Over and over again, quid pro quo. Remember the term, quid pro quo? But it wasn't. I, I didn't actually say, you have to say quid pro quo for there to be a quid pro quo. I mean, you have to, that's like in, that's in quid pro quo volume one. Called downstairs at the White House. I said, listen, do we have that call taped? Because there's no way I said those things. And they called back and tell me, yes, sir, we do, essentially. We had transcripts. Essentially. Of the call. Thank goodness we had transcripts. Um, by the way, uh, the transcript, we've done this way back in the day. He's running the same shit again. But all during that time, we were running the, the fact that the transcript that he held up was not a verbatim transcript. It was notes. He did not release. He could have, but he did not release the actual transcript. The actual transcript of that call has never been seen insofar as I know anywhere. It's still classified. The, the general... Um, like loose trend, and it even says it. This is not a verbatim transcript. And he's like, did we record that call? Sort of. We made notes. So I had them edit the notes and take out some things and put dot, 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 and uh, Scott Free. Because these guys were... Squid Pro Row, shiny Umbrian. Umbrians? What is it? Umbrionics? Oh, yes, yeah, like They're sick. They're sick people. And sick they people. were looking. These are sick people. They're disgusting or whatever. They put, you know, they, they like their, their steaks medium well or medium rare or medium something. I don't understand it. They don't put ketchup on spaghetti. They're sick people. To do a number. I'll tell you how bad they are. Tell us, please. Uh, settle in. It's going to be a good story. So, and I tell this story seldom, but it's a strong story, Monica. I've told this person that story. I'm sorry. You've all. Shit, everybody's here has heard this story. I'll tell it to the fake news in the back. The fake news. We got a lot of fake news back there. Look at that. We got to, look at, whoa. A lot of fake news back there. Thank you very much for the great job you do, by the way. What a defender she is. <laughs> Who? But, oh, yeah, wiggle woman. Wiggle finger. Yeah, her. But, they're so bad. So they come up with this Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. And they know it's a hoax. They know it's a hoax. I know it's a hoax, too. No. But they know it's a hoax. No. And Adam Shifty Schiff comes out from a very secretive room, intelligence committee or whatever. 
or whatever. I mean, if I was president at some point, I would know these terms, but blah, blah, blah. And he meets the press right in front. The press is going crazy. They're going crazy because they'll do anything to hurt Trump. Anything. They're evil people in many cases. Some cases, they're great people. All right. Does he just want half to half-ass every insult now? I, 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 honest to God, it's like he's doing a red meat speech, but he's only showing pictures of red meat. But a lot of evil people. Yes, a lot of them. But, you know, some of them are fine. Also evil, but evil, but, but a nice evil. And he stands up before a microphone. Now, this is a man who knows it's a fake story. Russia, Russia. No. Russia, Russia. I had no, they checked. Six years of. They checked. Phone calls. Millions of calls were made from my office. Not one call to Russia. Millions of calls. Not one call. They were surprised. They weren't surprised. Some people were surprised, but he stood up before the microphones and he also just like he bragged about talking to Vladimir Putin. He bragged about talking to oligarchs when he brought the fucking Miss Teen USA or whatever the fuck he brought over there. Of course, there were calls to Russia. He said, Donald, even 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 without the ones that he was clearly making under the table, Trump Jr. will go to prison for what he has done with Russia. My son, my son is gonna go to prison. He said, my son's going to go to prison. Hold on. Let's see. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? Nothing. Thank you. Um, okay, thanks. Uh, let's see. Since Don Jr. time out day two, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I, all right. Is this uh, House Intel chairmanship vows to get Trump Jr. phone records? Um, spoke to Trump Jr. to organize it another letter suggests Trump Jr. told his father that he'd received an offer for Russian help from the campaign. Trump was denied. Da -da -da, shift, da -da -da. Um, yeah, I, I, I've looked for it before during the show. He's brought this up before. Um, I, I still can't find it. Uh, uh June, Don Jr. said, if I lied like Schiff, they'd throw me in jail. Trump and race, uh, Trump Jr. might be going to uh, Trump. Let's see, that's in Salon. Oh, Trump. Okay, here it is. Uh, former President Jr. lashed out at uh, Adam Schiff on Friday during a speech at Faith and Freedom in Nashville for the radical left politics. I mean, there is warped error sense, but uh, Schiff, this guy, uh, watched this Adam Schiff the other day. Shifty Schiff, this guy's nothing. He's nothing. Call him watermelon. I never forget this guy. I knew it was a fake story. I'll never forget. Went to the microphone, said Don Jr. would go to prison. This is the same shit we're actually hearing right now. During the, um, I, but they don't, he says that, but I don't remember, like, where the fuck? Yeah. I don't, honest to God, like, I don't see him actually, if anybody could find that where allegedly Schiff actually said Don Jr. is going to prison, uh, and in relation to fucking what, other than, you know, like a subpoena or something. For what he's done with Russia. For what he's done with Russia. And my son didn't have anything to do with it. And he knew it was a fake story. It didn't know it was a fake story. Um, exclusive Trump Jr.'s mysterious calls weren't with his father. Uh, Senate investigators have obtained new information showing Donald Trump Jr.'s mysterious phone calls ahead of the 2016 Trump Tower meeting were not with his father, three sources uh, with knowledge of the matter told CNN. Records provided to the Senate Intelligence Committee showed the names were between Trump Jr. and two of his business associates and appear to contradict Democrats' long suspicions that he'd block, the block number was from then Donald Trump. That was the call before the meetings. Uh, because he was, because Jared had him on fucking speaker. 
Uh, information came to light recently. Could answer a key question over the meeting. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Lingering issue. Trump Jr.'s phone records include calls with two block numbers the same day he exchanged calls with Russian pop star Emin Agalarov, um, son of Russian oligarch who spearheaded the June 2016 Trump Tower meeting with uh, Natalia Vetselnitskaya. The calls came three days before Trump Tower meeting. Um, uh, hasn't confirmed what they were talked about. Blah, blah, It's not evident whether special counsel Mueller was blah, blah, blah. These are all the stories from back then. I, I can't find it. I, I would love, anybody wants to tweet it or spout it at me, um, uh, feel free. But And when it was finally revealed, now the Times, the Washington Post, they all admit it was a fake story. We're trying to get the Pulitzer Prize taken away. They got Pulitzer Prizes. <laughs> We're suing. We're suing to get their Pulitzer Prize taken away. Mm, good luck. You know what the prize says? For its concise and accurate reporting on the Russia, Russia, Russia event. Yeah, that's what it says. And they have it actually totally wrong. Actually, Mark Levin should get a prize. And Greg Jarrett. Greg Jarrett should get a prize. Yeah, they, they, they don't give Pulitzers to people who just yell at their producer nonstop for them to stop and start clips while they scream about Marxism. It's a, I mean, it's, I'm just saying, not that they wouldn't. It's just that it's kind of a, like that field is overrun. It's hard to distinguish, you know, what would make the top level. And even it's not his deal, Sean Hannity should get a prize. Yeah, they should all get a prize. You know what? This is President Participation Trophy has arrived. And frankly, Jesse should get a, su a prize. A surprise. Jesse surprise. Jesse should. Jesse should. He's already got my, you know, he's got that girl. And, you know, Jesse is a friend. Don't you know he's been a good friend of mine? But lately, something's changed. And a lot of people, and I'll tell you. Should get prizes. You should all get prizes. You should get a Pulitzer, and you should get a Pulitzer. I'm the Oprah of Pulitzers. Now. You know who should get a prize? Who? Tucker should get a prize. Tucker should get a prize. They're very strong. Tucker should get a prize, and very strongly. Just, uh inserted rectally to try to like help his prostate it ain't you're right uh ginger it ain't hard to define just he's got himself a girl and i want to make him mine now i'm gonna get stuck with that song yeah. and we have numerous writers that you get it but yeah everybody just the ones that got it were the New York Times, certain reporters from the New York Times, and certain reporters from the Washington Post. They got the Pulitzer Prize, and they were exactly wrong. And now they've even admitted that it was a hoax. No, they have not. It was a total hoax, and they got the, no, they have the prize. But how bad is a person that stands before a big gaggle of press, mm -hmm. and they just can't get enough, right? and says that my son is going to prison for something that he knows was a oh. hoax? Only a really bad person would do that. Yeah, really. But they really then came in person. with Ukraine, 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 the Mueller hoax. How did Mueller present himself at the hearings? It wasn't too pretty. What? But you know what? I'll say this. At least he beat the shit out of Durham. They came to the right conclusion because I was concerned they'd come to the conclusion. I think we have prosecutors now that- We were, they would come to the conclusion that there was collusion, but they came to the conclusion there was no collusion. Don't give no a collusion. damn if you're guilty. They're looking at me in Atlanta on a perfect phone call. I said- Oh my God. That even more perfect than my perfect call to Ukraine. <laughs> that was a perfect call. This is even more perfect. By the way, where's Hunter? You do realize there's no degrees of perfect than where's Where Hunter? Where is Hunter, remember? Where's Hunter? <laughs> Will there ever be a time when Joe Biden says, this thing with Hunter just isn't working out well? Oh, this is the whole, like, jettison your kid shit. I'm starting to get a little angry at Hunter. Or when Hunter comes to him and says, Dad, Dad, we have a problem. What? What is it, son? Another one? Oh, son, you're a disaster, son. <laughs> son, you're a disaster. This is uh, him replaying conversations he's had with Eric. Dad, we have a problem. I left my laptop at the repair shop. And Joe looks at him and says, what's on it, son? What's on it? And Hunter looks back and he says, every single crime that you've ever committed, Dad. 
There's Matt Gates standing up. And by the way, the contents of said laptop hard drive have been available online for two fucking years now. And how many crimes have they found? How many crimes have they found? It's got every crime he's ever committed, so there's got to be, what, what's your baseline number? How many crimes have they found? Zero. Never mind the fact that even the stuff they believe is unethical, largely, uh, you know, you can't tr- trust the source of the stuff anyways, but even still, like Tony Bobolinsky offering to, you know, basically insisting that Hunter make introductions for his dad, of his dad to their business partner, and then Bobolinsky losing his fucking job. It, it sort of points the other direction entirely. Not a single crime. Matt Gates has an entire copy. He tried to introduce the that hard drive into the congressional record, if you recall, and they stopped down because he was about to violate the rules in that he was about to introduce um, not just, you know, fraudulent foreign sourced uh, intel that was made up into the re- congressional record, which he's done again. He did with the Global Times, the Chinese paper um, in, you know, in reference to Ukraine. But on top of that, non-consensual nudes, like leave it to Matt Gates to try and put to try to get non-consensual nude pictures into the congressional record. <laughs> These people are going to be so disappointed. <laughs> By the way, there is no Hunter Biden laptop. And hence it's called the laptop from hell. And Mar- Yes, because... Hell doesn't exist either. Miranda Devine did a great book on that. And she actually thanked me. She said, I got the name from Trump. Trump, I got, she told me, she said, I want to thank you for the name. I said, no charge. But she did, she did a great job. Great book. The laptop from. No, it's, it's a ridiculous book. I've read it. He hasn't read from it. Hell. If I- He's seen the title and he wants credit for the title. So I so much as fly over a blue state. They do so many bad things, it's just crazy. The racist Manhattan District Attorney, Alvin Bragg, who is presiding over one of the most dangerous and violent cities in the United States. You- the, the Straits, we have, we're, our, we're a country of just narrow sea lanes now. You have to see this, the United States, where killings are taking place at a number like nobody's ever seen. Well, no, actually, at numbers like we've seen. It's New York. In Manhattan. And he's doing nothing about it, nothing whatsoever. No cash bail for people that just kill people. Yeah, everybody else, yeah, obviously, you know, shoplifters, of course. But if you kill somebody, you just get a get out of, I guess, get out of jail free card, get out of bail free card. Knife him in the back. Well, yeah, it's different from the front. Over though. the head with a baseball bat. Not at the same time. Obviously. Push them into subways when the train. And, and when they don't even eat sandwiches like that. I mean, that's a lot. If you're not used to the, I mean, some people just, I mean, the, the roll versus, versus flatbread thing is an ongoing. I mean, just some people refuse. It's right there. But this racist DA is being pushed by. Radical left Democrats, the fake news media, and the Department of Injustice <laughs> to bring charges against me for now ancient, no affair story of Stormy Horseface Daniels. No attraction. No attraction. Get fucked. No affair. I call it no affair. Then why'd you pay her $130,000? Where there's no crime. Mushroom. I'm anyway. And charges have never... There's no crime. Like, I mean, it's, adultery isn't illegal. ...never been brought in such a case before. And this case has been looked by every prosecutor. They're all looking. They've looked at it for years now. She was represented by Michael Avenatti. How's he doing? <laughs> He's now in jail. And the whole thing is a complete con job. Interesting. Uh, he's in jail for other shit. She, however still has a case against you. Curious that. Job. By the way, your CFO is in jail right now. The fu- the chief financial officer of Trump 
of the Trump Organization is in jail now. All right. And she was ordered to pay me a federal court order this hundreds of thousands of dollars. But they're still looking at it. They're still looking. And all they do is they cause anger and problems for our country because our people aren't going to take this stuff. No, somebody's going to have to do something about her. I'm not saying it should be you guys, but if you need a bus ticket. I guess. It never ends. In the meantime, Hunter and Joe Biden skate. You know, they skate. They go. They do. They skate. Uh, they Like rollerblade. Large. I think Joe likes to bicycle, right? They go away free. What's going on with that? I mean, that last. What is that? What's the what is the deal with crime? Kept up is a disaster. Has anyone read this thing? How how can it be possible? Yes, yes. They're looking. At they all. Everybody there has gone through that fucking thing, and they're all just frustrated at the lack of crime. In Delaware, how's he doing? He's not the same guy that I have for the document hooks. I have a man. He's a total animal, known to be. And he's looking, looking, looking. In the meantime, Biden's guy that's looking, looking, looking. Don't forget, I had a very strong privilege as president. I was able to do things that he wasn't able to do as vice president. And No. Uh, Obama signed an executive order giving vice president, then vice president Joe Biden, the right to classify or declassify documents. By the way, uh, Trump just delivered more classified documents that they admit were classified. There would be no reason no reason to return them as classified documents if he had magically declassified them. And they keep doing it. wasn't able to do as a senator. The Senate, even the Senate, they can't believe it. The Senate cannot believe it. The Senate is just, I talked to the Senate yesterday and they're like, what? But when you look at what happened, they're not even no. looking at him. They haven't even started. No. Congress and various radical left Democrat prosecutors in an effort to stop me, go to the Supreme Court twice. They went twice, and the Supreme Court, in a moment of total weakness, gives them everything they want in order to try and prosecute Trump, everything. Thank you very much, Supreme Court. I appreciate it. But they found nothing. They looked at 11 million pages of documents. It's a big company. It's a great company. Remember His CFO is in jail right now. His CFO is in jail right but now. my taxes? We're after his taxes. Five years I heard about my taxes. They came out about two months ago. Everyone said, wow, it's a great company he built. That's great. That's the end of it. Uh, no, it isn't. No, right? No, that's why your CFO is in jail. That's why your company is on trial. And you know, I had... The biggest and most prestigious, one of them at least, law firms, accounting firms, doing all this stuff. I don't do it. They do it. You rely on these people. They do it. But I didn't hear mm -hmm. one word. And how stupid am I telling you this story right now? Because now they we got to find something in there. He made a typographical error. There's a revolution going on within the... Thank God he got back to the speech. Just like randomly this fucking sidecar conversations are killing the FBI me. because they don't want to be doing what they're being told to do because they know right from wrong. I'm talking about the people that work in the FBI and they like me and they like you a lot. So many of them. Are but we've got to defund them. We've got to destroy the FBI because they're on to me and they'll do their job even if they don't like it. Recent article in the Washington Post of all papers stated very succinctly that Many did not. You mean the Jeff Bezos? Not want to raid Mar-a-Lago. They didn't want the agents. They said that's terrible. But they were forced to do so by their Marxist radical left leadership. Oh, I see. So the the FBI has been infiltrated by Marxist elites who apparently have been working in the FBI since at least Reagan and working their way up to the upper echelons of the FBI just for this moment. And it drove my popularity numbers through. Who would think this? I got impeached and I went up 11 points. It's not supposed to work. Though. Mark, when Nixon got impeached, it went down, right? It was a spiral down. Well, he left. He couldn't stop it. I got impeached. We went up. But the FBI people, they didn't want to do this.
They didn't want to do it. No. To those in the FBI that are with us, I want to thank you very much. I really do. I want to thank you. But we're going to have to uh, put you out of a job because eventually you're going to see enough evidence and you're just not going to be able to say no. Stay strong. Stay strong. Help is coming. Then there's the racist DA from Atlanta, whose city is among the most violent and dangerous places per capita in the country. More no, that's Bakersfield. That's Kevin McCarthy's district. More murders than even Chicago per capita. It's totally out of control, and yet she has her kangaroo court focused on a perfect phone call that I made. While her jury foreman, a rather bizarre young woman, is going around doing media interviews and saying exactly what's going on in this. One of many grand juries. Our opponents do anything they can to hurt me politically because they're afraid of me and they're afraid of you. That's what it is. Well, you have tried to kill people. But it's not supposed to work that way. No, it's not. The disinformation People say they are great at disinformation. The one we want to run against is Trump. Do you ever hear that? Oh, we want to run against Trump, even though I'm leading every one of these guys. And even though I. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I, I yeah, say yes. Won the second is. election. OK, I won it by a lot. You know, when no. they say when they say Biden won. Yes, he did. The smart, the smart people know that, didn't they? But right now we're way up. But they say, oh, we want to run against Trump. They always say that. They say that about everybody. When they have somebody that they don't want to run against, a governor, a senator, they say, we want to run against, because it's like demeaning. You know, in other words, like you're supposed to be a schlemiel that, I mean, I got 75 million votes. I got more votes than any sitting president in history the second time. And we really did. We did a much better job than we did in 2016. 2020, we did better than 2016. Yeah, unfortunately, that was because of mail-in voting and people voting from home and voting early, which even your supporters didn't uh, totally balk at. And Biden did way better. That's we had more participation in that election than any other because you it would it wasn't you didn't have to ice skate uphill to fucking vote. But they say we want to run against Trump. In the meantime, they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars trying to find just a single word, a sentence, anything to prosecute Trump because they don't want to run against me. That's what they say. We want to run against Trump. We'll do anything to run against Trump. Uh, they have the greatest line of bullshit of any group of people I've ever seen. Oh my God, he said bullshit. Yeah. Want to run against Trump. Standing ovation for the word bullshit. <laughs> and they're chanting bullshit now. So apparently they, they think his statement was bullshit as well. But at the same time, they send people from the Justice Department to the local DA's office in Manhattan. Do you know the Justice Department sent their top people to the Manhattan DA's office to help in the prosecution of Trump? This way, we have it a little bit away from Washington. It's local. Oh, we had nothing to do. But their top guy was put in that office to help prosecute Trump. Like, this is just a fucking gripe fest about all of his uh, his lawsuits now. We're going to get to E. Jean Carroll, aren't we? How would you like to have my life? Would anybody like my life? Nope. But I still like it. Uh-huh. <laughs> but they want to try and find anything. Everyone, one of the biggest laughs of the night is the idea that Trump likes his life. Thing they can when they've already been... Exonerated. I've been exonerated many times. You take a look at what this been. I mean, time after time. But all of this is happening for one single reason. They know that when they know you're a criminal fuck and and you're a danger to everyone around you in the country and you're a way over your head and stupid. We return to power. We will bring their lies and their corruption and their disinformation tumbling down. Tumbling. Our getting back in the White House. Which will never happen. Is their worst nightmare. Um, by the way, whew, I need a like a break for one second. Hi, everybody. Good Lord, is this fucker boring. 
It's the same just ragged shit over and over again. I think AI wrote this speech. Yeah, they did a Stephen Miller AI. <laughs> Good Lord. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome, chat room. Good to see you. Um, thanks for being here. Like, thumbs up, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Whew. It's a... Uh, it's a lot. It's a, it's a, it's definitely a lot. I don't, I don't uh, hold on. I gotta, it's getting warm in here. Hold on. I'm gonna turn my fan on and just to, oh God, it's, we're going to be here all fucking night, aren't we? Jesus. But it is our country's only hope. It's our only hope. If we, yes, Obi-Wan Kenobi is our only don't hope. Don't get back. Now this country can't take it. Even the two years and now fortunately it's less than that. It's hard to believe it's less. <laughs> Yes, time passes. Halfway between four uh, four years. Once you hit the halfway mark, it's less than two years to the yeah. I used to say four years. A lot of people said, "Well, sir, the election was so bad. You'll be in in one year." A lot of people in this room, you'll be back in six weeks, sir. But it's a bad system in many ways. <laughs> no. Yeah, a lot of people in this room said you'll be president again in six weeks, sir. And it's really a bad system, apparently not. It's very bad, very dangerous system. But nobody else can do it but us. In recent weeks, I've been laying out a bold, detailed agenda for how... Uh-huh. Agenda 47. We're going to complete this mission in our next term. I do weekly statements, and people are liking them. Oh, yeah, they're so good. They're, uh, they're tops. Today, I want to go through some of our big plans that... Oh I my will God, is he's going to repeat the scripts from these fucking things? I'm jumping ahead. Do as the 47th president of the United States. That's what he says. He's, he's going to do, he's going to read the agenda 47 pieces. I might jump through some because we've heard this shit. Is that Rob Schmidt from fucking Newsmax? Thank you. At the top of my list... We'll be stopping the slide into costly and never-ending wars. We've got to stop it. Can't keep... You got to stop that slide. we got to, you know, it's an electric slide. And it gets spending hundreds of billions of dollars protecting people that don't even like us. I'm sorry, the Ukrainians don't like us? Well, they don't like you, maybe. Now, you know, in business, if you did that, what you do is you put up the money and then you say, but listen, we own half your country in case you win. You know. What? You know, there's just, I'm saying there's a lot of minerals in Rwanda and we would have, thank you, JD, and thank you, Fred, uh, by the way, and thanks, Scott. This is going one way or the other, war with Russian allies with, what? Sorry. This is going one way or the other, war with Russia allies with China or war with China allies with Russia. Uh, no, neither. It's not, uh, Scott, it's not going either way. You take a just for the record, we we talk about that a bunch. To, um, Wednesday, Philip Bittner will be on, and N Malcolm Nance will be on the morning show on Friday, um, and we cover this a bunch. Neither are going to happen. I'm telling you, piece of the upside, right? We get nothing. In fact, the opposite. A piece of the upside. We put up the money, and then after it's finished, assuming it's successful, let's say it's successful, they don't want to even talk to us. Nope, you have nothing to do with us. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened with the with. Germany and Japan after the war. That's what happened to, yeah. Have nothing. No, no. In business, you put up money. Yeah, the English, the French. After World War II, they were like, I don't even understand. Seed money. Time. Call it whatever you want. You end up owning the country by the time it's over. Again, like, motherfucker, it's not imperialism or nothing. His biggest gripe, and this is going to be very upsetting to Russell Brand, who is a fucking moron, his biggest gripe is that America does not have imperialist aims on the countries that it supports militarily. That's been his gripe the whole time. We keep the oil. I was like, why don't we keep the oil? Should we keep the oil? And America's like, we're not keeping the oil. We don't, we're helping them out or we're fighting an enemy, but we're not keeping their natural resources. That's to the people that live there. And the only reason they're doing well is we're giving them the greatest equipment that I bought. The greatest equipment ever made. And the only reason they're doing well with NATO is I raised $440 billion from... He's already talked about this part. Fuck, man, he's just looping. Countries that weren't paying anything. 
And the Secretary General Stoltenberg, a good man, he said it's one of the greatest jobs I've ever seen. I hope he still says that, but uh, one of the greatest jobs. He said Obama would come and make a speech. Bush would come, make a speech, and then they'd leave. I came, I looked, I said, man, these people aren't paying. We're paying for the whole thing, practically. Of the 28 countries at the time, only eight were paid up. 20 weren't, including Germany. They paid a fraction of what they were supposed to be paying. And I said to him, By the way, he does know that they don't pay us, right? That's not money that came to the United States. Yeah, and again, part of, that's part of this lie. This asshole wants you to think that these guys pay America for protection. That they're supposed to give us, they're delinquent, they owe us that money. They don't. They have to contribute a certain amount of their budget, 2%, to military usage that goes that would go to NATO causes if necessary. And in many ways, they didn't believe it would be necessary anytime soon, or the countries that did have bigger militaries that would kind of glom together and they thought the chances of Russia were, you know, attacking were very low. And and it was kind of at a low ebb anyways. And then, you know, Russia attacks in 2014 and people start building it back up a bit. But then when Trump comes in, he's saying they they they're delinquent, like they owe us protection money or that they should put that in. He was half expecting them to say, no, we can't afford it. It's, it's bad now, so we're, we're just out. We're out of NATO. It was another attempt for, to dismantle NATO. Either you pay, or we're not going to protect you. And a man stood up, a president of a country stood up. Oh, okay, good. I, I'd hate if it was a woman. And he said, sir, can I ask you a question? This was a round table with nobody in the room but the presidents, Prime Minister and dictators, okay? Some of them are all the same. Some of them are all the same. No, a dictator is not a prime minister or a president. Um, for the record, Vladimir Putin is a fake president. Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping is, a, is the chairman of the Communist Party. He is not the president of China. You, just because you preside over something doesn't mean you're democratically elected. But they stood up, and he stood up and said, Sir, can I ask you a question? Uh, if Sir, pr President, I'd, I used to call you Don. If we don't pay up, and if we get attacked by Russia, will you protect us, sir? I said, now you're not paid up, right? That's right. You're delinquent, right? Yes. I will not protect you from Russia. <laughs> sir, we'll send you a check tomorrow, sir. Again, uh, this is like, that. it's not money that goes to us. The fact that, at, like, at a certain point, I know he's lying to these people. But do they actually, does you think he actually thinks it's money that comes to the United States? It's not a fucking membership fee. It's not a goddamn golf club. We'll send you a check tomorrow. No, I, again, just, I mean, is just not how it works at all. If, if anything, they go, okay, tomorrow we'll start building tanks. It will be sent by overnight mail, sir. Again, this is such bullshit. Like, I promise you'll have it tomorrow. Now, have I said, like the stupid politicians say, absolutely will be, you know, Article 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, where well, you're supposed to do it. But those articles all suppose that you're supposed to be paid up. But let's say I said the opposite. Let's, yes, we will always protect you. And I took a lot of heat because they said, I'm not a good member. Actually, NATO wouldn't even exist if I didn't get them to pay up. But they paid up $449 billion or something, and that's the money they use. They're rich as hell right now. They spent an office building that cost $3 billion. They spent an office building. It's like a skyscraper in Manhattan laid on its side. It's one of the longest buildings I've ever seen. And I said, you should have, instead of spending $3 billion, you should have spent $500 million building the greatest bunker you've ever seen because Russia didn't, wouldn't even need an airplane attack. One tank, one shot through that beautiful glass building and it's gone. Same architect. What the shit? Are we supposed to believe he actually said that to fucking Germany or France or whoever the shit? Like talk, uh, literally talking about the Louvre? I used in Chicago, great architects, but they didn't have war in mind. 
But when things happened, that building would be gone in about 15 minutes. They should have spent a 500. All buildings could be gone in 15 minutes when a war starts. What the shit are you talking about? Million dollar bunker, nice thick ceiling, six inches, six feet of concrete. And by the way, we have a great gentleman. Speaking of China, will you please stand up? Gordon, stand up, please. Wait, Gordon Chang? Gordon Chang. Oh, for fuck's sake. Gordon Chang uh, is a CCP talking points uh, propagandist who what basically works in the inverse. He, 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 he portrays China as the encroaching boogeyman that can't be stopped so that everybody's scared. You know, there's, there are two ways that you can promote Christianity. One is churches and the other is the omen and uh, the exorcist and devil movies because devil movies work just as well as a promoter of Christian faith and vampire stories as do churches. Do you understand? Does that make sense? That's what Gordon Chang does. Gordon basically says, you may not have total faith, but you should carry a cross at all times because uh, they can they can get you at any time. They're that powerful. <laughs> Dude, he doesn't even know why he's telling, like, why he's applauding him. You know, I'm talking a lot about China, and I'm looking over, I'm saying him, and I'm just studying his face as I'm speaking. Oh, no. Because people do like me to go off script a little bit, right? It's a little bit more risky, but it's more exciting. And I'm looking at Gordon and I'm saying, you know, I hope he agrees with what I'm saying. But basically, I'm saying exactly what you say. They're not out for our good, are they? They're not out for our good. And nobody ever taxed them like I did. And nobody ever took any money in like I did. 440 billion. We took in, we took in so much money from China. It's so incredible. So I just, it's an honor to have you here. Really, it is. I agree with almost everything you say. Almost everything. Great. Thank you very much. Almost. I, again, he's seen him do one segment. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Great job. Both of you. Madam Gordon. I was the only president in decades that didn't have a war. But oh, my God. It's, again, he's, he's going, it's, he's looping this shit. I completed wars that were already started, including defeating 100% of the ISIS caliphate. One Except that whole ISIS-K thing in uh, northern Afghanistan and obviously the ones that would have surrounded Bagram and made life hell for our soldiers had they been left there like he intended. 100%. I was also the only president where Russia didn't take over a country during my term. They took over U.S. bases in Syria. Russia took over not because I got along with Vladimir Putin very well. <laughs> yeah. They didn't leave anywhere, and they prepped for this attack. Say, Vladimir, don't do it. You know, you and I have friends. Don't take over any countries because, you know, my... Yeah, that's what he said. Don't take over any countries. Not while I'm here. Wait till I'm gone and then have... Moscow will be hit very hard. I told him things. Bullshit. He probably didn't believe it, but you know what? He believed it 10%, and President Xi believed it when I talked about Beijing. He probably said, I don't believe him, but there's a 10% chance we're not going to do anything. <laughs> It's true. It's true. You have no idea. These conversations. I wish. Yeah, I do. No, we don't. Please go on. Tell us how you threatened to nuke Beijing over what? And that apparently they didn't believe you when you said it, but they had a, a sneaking suspicion you might because you're fucking nuts. They could have been recorded, actually. People would think a lot of me. <laughs> but with Bush. Right. No, they they weren't. He knows they weren't because he didn't actually say that. they invaded Georgia. Right. With Obama, they took Crimea with Biden. They're trying to take everything and failing. And he won't even know they took it. That is a I think that's an old age joke, which they enjoy very much. Um, meanwhile, this is from a man who said uh, fighting in countries we don't even know the name, like you wouldn't even know their name. Sure. Thank you. And um, by the way, uh, thank you, Boats G and JD Christie. Thank you. <laughs> he made an old joke. <laughs> oh, they're doing Let's Go Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Thank you. And with Thank you. me, they took nothing, nothing. 
except your virginity. And I didn't really even have to threaten them. And your balls. Very much. They understood me very well. I wanted them to understand me very well. They knew. Oh, yes, I wanted them to understand how much I wanted a Trump Tower Moscow. Knew that they couldn't do. And now it's never going to happen. God damn it. But Putin knew that. President. Oh, yes, Putin knew. And she knew it, too. Likewise, China now has its eyes strongly focused on Taiwan. And we could soon have a nuclear-armed Iran. That's the saddest thing of all, though, when we talk about Iran. That's the saddest thing when you it see I so had sad. them in a box. I said to China, you can't buy any oil from Iran. They said, no, no, we have to buy. We buy, we buy millions of barrels here. And I said, you can't buy. You have to buy from somebody else. No, no, we'll buy. I said, good. We're not going to do any more trading with China. We're going cold turkey. We will promise you not to buy from Iran. OK, that was the end of that. You know, that was a conversation I had. I said, if you buy from Iran any oil, we're not going to do any business or if for some reason we do, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single thing that you sell into. All right. Uh, gibberish. I mean, there's like areas where he like conflates stories and whatever. Just nonsense. The United States. And they didn't buy any oil. And nobody was buying oil. And they were in a position, had the election not turned out the way it did, they were in a position where uh, they, they would have made a deal so fast. They were going to give us everything. We were going to make a great deal. But now they're rich again. China is buying unlimited amounts of oil from Iran, unlimited uh -huh. amounts and other places. And we've done something else that's terrible. From the time I'm a young man. Wait, is China buying unlimited stuff from Iran and other places? Or is Iran selling to other places that aren't part of the conversation he had that he didn't actually have. Who gives a I shit? Learned oh, this is the whole thing. If Russia and China get together, that's where you're going right now. Never allow Russia and China to get together to wed. Never, ever. To wed. Yeah, they can fuck. I mean, they can be friends with benefits, obviously. You know, they can get to third base. Okay, if they get to third base, you're kind of in trouble. But if they ever... They seal the deal. We're fucked. Allow it. And we've not only allowed it, we've made them bosom buddies. We've made them. Great show. Great show. Them. Uh, we forced them together. Did we? We forced them together. How dare we? How dare. Uh, that was dumb on our part. What were we thinking? Forcing Russia and China together. Well, that, well, I guess. Economically, geopolitically, we've had it. We're done, folks. Pack it up. They team up. They're going to get along. I mean, these folks are going to be thick as thieves who don't trust each other and have a gun at each other's head all the time and are always cheating each other out of the things they've stolen. But still, thick as thieves. Bosom buddies, which is a weird And thing. you can add another group in there, a nuclear-armed Iran so the three of them are now together. That should have never been allowed to happen. Would have never happened with me. And also, A, isn't happening. But also, uh, what, what would you have done to stop it? What do, what do you mean? Where, where are you going to bomb first? Moscow, Beijing, or, or Tehran? Which one gets the nuke first? And it was all over oil, our stupid oil policy. We're not going to drill. We have more oil in the United States. I call it liquid gold. Than any country in the world, including Saudi Arabia, people don't. No, we did. Venezuela has more oil than. Don't anyway. realize it. They don't realize it because it's not true. Thank you, Gundar. In Alaska. Gun, sorry, Gunlogger. Yes, Lauergerger. I don't know. I approve. Some of these names are hard to pronounce. They're adorable. But approved yeah. a site. We all know what the site is. Probably the biggest in the world. And the Democrats said no. It's over. They turned it down. Oh, Anwar. Ronald Reagan tried to do it. Every president, Republican, and some Democrats tried to do it. They couldn't get it done. I got it done. No, you didn't, because it got undone before it even got started. And the first day in office, the Secretary of the Interior for Biden. Mm -hmm. Yes, the sitting president. Signed off on it, where they're going to not allow, allow it to happen. So they're going to, they signed off on not signing off on it. I got you. Okay, I mean, I'm not... 
privy to all this technical mumbo jumbo. Bigger, probably, than Saudi Arabia. And no, if we had that, we if we had that, we would have, I mean, the snow would be black as coal and that would be a beautiful thing. Without even my talking to Putin, oil would have been at $40, $35, maybe $30 a barrel. So it is for Russia right now. So he wouldn't have even had the money to prosecute a war exactly. against Ukraine. He wouldn't have done it anyway, but I'm, and that's not even what I'm saying from previous, but he wouldn't have had the money even if he wanted to. You he was stockpiling money. Ukraine would have been thriving. There would have been no dead people. There would have been no dead people. They would have been, uh, Ukrainians would be immortal. And there would have been no obliterated cities that can never be rebuilt. No, no, no one's ever built a, rebuilt an obliterated city. It, it just doesn't happen. Uh, I, I, I wish he was giving this speech in Turkey. Never rebuilt. It would have been, it would be so inspiring. Those cities. Russia never would have pulled the trigger. This is the most dangerous time in the history of our country. And Joe Biden. Well, I mean, I, I wasn't around during the Revolutionary War, but I'm guessing it was that was a rough one. Is leading us into oblivion. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, as Tom Cruise movies go, rock solid. And I have to say, I've been envying that motorcycle suit ever since that movie. Yeah. I mean, if I, you know, once I become a like uber rich dickhead, expect me to be riding around on a on a stark white electric motorcycle with that outfit. I'm just saying. He's leading us into oblivion. You know, we all smile when he falls downstairs and things. It's, it's cute. Upstairs. When he falls off his bicycle. Isn't this cute? You know what amazed me? That the reporters didn't catch him when the bike was going down. They're standing right next to him. They let him fall. It's amazing. I'm surprised. Yeah, it's almost like everybody, nobody told you about the toilet paper on your shoe that time. And, and you know, granted, he was on a, mo he was on, he was riding a bicycle as opposed to you, which had a, having a general hold your arm as you walk down a ramp. But when he makes statements that are so bad, when he gets out of Afghanistan and takes the soldiers, takes, think of the, takes the soldiers out first. Literally, the last person to leave was an American soldier. You know, in Afghanistan, for 18 months, I had a... We didn't have a single person, and he said that we go to that, and they said, don't say that. Talk with Abdul, who was the leader of Afghanistan. I said, Abdul... Yeah, and by the way, Abdul is not the leader of Afghanistan. Oh, I got a lot... And he certainly wasn't at the time. He was in jail. The criticism. Remember when I was talking to him? Everyone said, oh, he's talking to... No, you wanted to bring him to fucking Camp David. The leader of the Taliban, that's right, because our, our soldiers were being killed, a lot of them, by snipers. And I didn't want that. I don't want to deal with... I, yeah, you didn't want to deal with the uh, dignified returns at, at Dover because you only went to four of the 96 that happened while you were president? Problems, and I don't want to talk to the mothers and fathers who I would speak Yeah, you didn't, as a matter of fact. Speak to a lot. Nope. You didn't. I don't want to talk to them and tell them this. Son mm -hmm. was shot through the head from two thousand yards away by a sharp. Sh no, you want to tell them they were killed up close by you know friendly fire. It's much easier. Shooter, they have very what the fuck very good sharpshooters. They the, the Taliban have very good sharpshooters. That's how they were able to kill your son, ma'am. I mean, what are you gonna do? I mean, he was he's pretty much dead man walking since he left the 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 tent that morning. You know. Anyways, uh, we have flowers for her, right? So I spoke to this man, his name was Abdul, and I said, Abdul, don't kill any more of our soldiers because if you- And we'll get out. You kill our soldiers, we're gonna hit you harder than any country has ever been hit in the history of the world. I mean, you're talking to a place that's been obliterated multiple fucking times. Half of the people in the villages that these guys were uh, are entrenched in weren't Taliban. They were basically entire villages full of human shields. What the fuck does that even mean? The dude was in jail in Pakistan and you're threatening to blow up Kabul? 
and we're going to keep your poppy money. That's why we're keeping the bottom half of the country. Fuck Pakistan and and all this, the the like the Pashtun regions. We're gonna we're keeping the poppies. We're keeping that's you don't have oil, but we're keeping the opium. <laughs> USA. USA. This is gibberish, by the way. He's the only speaker without a timer, if you'll notice. Because he wouldn't pay attention. He's a, it's like it's like he's like a shitty dude at an open mic who runs the light. By the way, we're well past the normal end of the show, and thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. This is going to be a long one. Uh, you feel free to go get a bite and come back. I'll probably still be here. But uh, hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe, maybe uh, Patreon. Yeah, I don't know if you want. Maybe at some point. Um, yeah. And he called me your excellency. He was, you know, I got along. He's still there. He's still the, he's still the leader of the Taliban. He calls me some nights, you know, in the middle of the night. He texts me, actually. I've got more dick pics from Abdul. Not too good. And, but now he's got $85 billion worth of our equipment that I bought. No, he doesn't. No, you didn't. $85 billion. I... By the way, understand what that means. That, just that little bit right there. What, what that means is that Trump wants you to believe, true or not, that we dumped $85 billion worth of gear into Afghanistan in the first two years of his term. Or no, after his, no, after his second, his second budget. So in the, in the middle of his term for two, in two years time, Trump dumped $85 billion worth of met, with, worth of uh, military equipment into Afghanistan for what? Said to General Milley, I want every piece of equipment. Sir, I think it would be cheaper to leave it behind, sir. That's what I lost faith. That and when he didn't like me holding up a Bible in front of a church, I said, this guy's not with us. This is not a, this is not a smart guy. Um, is that a, is that your Bible? It's a Bible. It's upside down. But he didn't like it. I said. No, he didn't give a shit. He just didn't believe it was his position that he walked with you on this photo op. I want every single, because I was getting out of. But I would have kept Bagram because... Right. You can't... Fuck you. I That part drives me ape shit. You can't get out and stay, you dumb son of a bitch. You can't get out and stay. How is that... How does he keep saying that and people still buy this... I don't know. Maybe they don't. Maybe... Maybe that's the one part where everybody in the CPAC audience just dozes off every time. Like, like It's like hypnosis. Every time he says that phrase, they all black There's out. Bagram's one hour away from where China, forget about Afghanistan, where China makes its nuclear weapons. One hour away. The By the way, Russell Brand likes Donald Trump and thinks that at the very least he was our most peaceful president. For real. And defends him as such on the regular. As do some bizarre, like, faux-gressive tankies, especially about this. When Donald Trump is telling you right this fucking second that he wanted a, a basically a bomber brigade and, and an infantry division an hour away from where China makes its nuclear material just in case we decide we want to bomb the factory where they process the shit. Biggest, most powerful runways in the world... Again, what the fuck has this got to do? It's not even true. What is Bagram just one giant fucking runway? We built it many years ago for tens of billions of dollars. And we gave it away one night. We just left, left the lights on. We did leave the dogs behind. Everyone says, oh, did they take the dogs? Because they're dog lovers, right? No, we left the dogs behind. And the Taliban doesn't like dogs, by the way. Yes. The, yeah, they, they hate two things, women and dogs. Not at all. But we... I don't even know what the fuck that means, by the way. The, the Taliban in general, is it in the... Is it supposedly in the Quran that dogs suck, according to Trump? We left in disgrace. It was... It's the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, in my opinion. 
Again, he doesn't feel shame. He only feels embarrassment. It's the only emotion he recognizes as negative, and he feels it all the time. And, and it probably is what caused Putin to say, wow, Trump is gone. This is a great time to take over Ukraine, right? This yeah, and it was, a, it was a terrible take. Yes, if he be- it, I, I don't think that was the, the defining factor. As a matter of fact, if you read Peter Zion's book from fucking three years ago, he practically laid out the date that he was going to do it because of the, the lowering demographic, because of the need for resources, for, because of their strategic uh, impression on the rest of Europe that they wanted to make. It was already in play. It was going to happen. But let's just say that it was the, re- the final withdrawal. We finally are getting the fuck out of Afghanistan. Multiple presidents have promised it. Joe Biden finally fucking does it. Like, hook lines out. Everything. We're leaving. And he's like, what a great time to attack Ukraine. NATO won't get together. The U.S. is weak and won't respond. And boy, was he fucking wrong. Maybe, I'm just saying, maybe he's not at the, uh, what's the phrase, top of his game. It's probably a reason that that happened. The fuck are you nodding at, mustache? But I stand here today, and I'm the only candidate who can make this promise. I will prevent, and very easily... World War Three, very easy. <laughs> well, I I got look, if we spend two years on the precipice of World War Three, then it, it ain't happening. I'm just saying if I'm if World War Three, quote unquote, as it's happening, doesn't happen for the next two years, it's probably not gonna happen after the fact very easy so easy like all i'll have to do is this i again i don't even know how you clap to that it's just goofy and you're gonna have yes world war three sucks we know boo not like biden who wants to destroy all life on earth because he hates his grandkids what world war three by the way we're going to have World War Three. All right. Well, then I guess uh, what the fuck is the point of promising it after you're inaugurated two years? When's it happening? Because I think, what is it? Uh, we got about six months before we're in World War Three, And then I, I guess, wh- where do we have the election? In the ruins? Are we going to, like, are they going to use, uh, is Dominion going to hand out Geiger counters um, when you're voting? If something doesn't happen fast, you're going to have World War Three. If something doesn't happen fast. Well, that was the fear about World War III is that it would happen fast. And, and again, you're, you couldn't possibly be president. You won't. But again, for a couple of years. So if... And by the way... By the, by the way, I can also promise that if we ever are headed towards the Red Sea and the pharaohs are behind us, I could part that thing super easy, so quickly. 24 hours, I could have that sea parted. Uh, Everybody would have a coconut drink with a little umbrella in it, Uh, Diet Coke, whatever you like in those things. And, uh, And of course, if we ever had a meeting with Iran, I would just throw my staff on the ground and it would turn into a snake, and I'd be like, that's what you get. Just to conclude that little story, Yes, and it is a little story. When Abdul... Oh, my God. Why, oh, why do you show me a picture of my house? Heard me say that. He said, Your Excellency, thank you so much for telling me that. He said, But why, but why? I thought it was a very interesting play in words. I've never heard it. I use it now sometimes myself. I liked it. (laughs) He said, But why, but why, Mr. President? Do you send me pictures of my home? I said, you'll have to ask your wives that question. Because they're the ones I'm going to kill. Because obviously, you're not at home, nor do I expect you to be for a very long time but your wives and children will be obliterated. Honest to God. Yep. 
Hey, Republicans, this is, come get your boy. And we didn't have. <laughs> and what he did is he just went home and killed all of his wives. Just to, you know, because he was worried we'd have leverage. Mark will tell you this. We didn't have. Mark, yeah. Mark will tell you anything. One soldier killed in 18 months. Not one soldier was killed. Because you told them, if you don't kill anyone, we will be out by this date. If you kill anybody, they'll make me stick around. Not one soldier, right? So bad. No, 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 no. In fact, it was so good that the media didn't mind that I called. I took a lot of heat, tremendous heat. Why do you call him? I said, well, you know, they asked Jesse James, the great bank robber from many years ago, why is it that you robbed banks? Why do you always go after banks? And he looked. So that's where the money is. Looked at him, he says, because that's where the money is. <laughs> So if you want murder, you go where the murders are. Well, I spoke to Abdul because that's where the problem was. But we won 18 months until that horrible day. No, it wasn't. He was in jail. His 5,000 fighters were fucking in jail. How was, how was he where the problem? He wasn't, he wasn't a problem. When we lost 13 soldiers. And you know, the thing that nobody ever talks about. We they don't talk about who injured and they bet their faces. We lost 13, we lost $85 billion worth of the greatest military equipment in the world. Goggles, night goggles that are so good, so sophisticated, better than anything we have. Brand new, never even taken out of the box. And you know, the Afghans, and, and they're actually very good. The Taliban are good fighters. Afghan, because it's really very much the same thing, frankly. They didn't fight good for us, but they fought, they fought good for themselves. And it took But now they can fight it. took a lot of money from us. I asked General Mattis, I said, you know, we got to get out of there. They've been there for 20 years. We got to get out of there. Sir, they're fighting for their country, sir. I said, hmm, that's right, I guess they are. Then about two days later, I was thinking about it. I said, I don't know why, because, you know, we had more uh, blue on green, green on blue, where they get their gun and then they'd shoot our master sergeants and our sergeants that are training them. I said, why are they fighting for us if we've never had this problem to the extent that we had it? But he said that. He said, they're fighting. And I said, are we paying them a lot of money to fight? And I had it checked. Yeah, we were paying billions and billions and billions of dollars to these Afghan soldiers. Tens of billions of dollars. Uh-huh. I said, they're not fighting, General. I called them back in. They're not fighting because they love us or they love their country. They're fighting because they're the highest paid soldiers in the world. We're basically bribing them to fight. And they didn't fight. but. The Taliban did fight. Same people, but the Taliban did fight. But they didn't kill anybody for 18 months. I'm very proud. Okay. Like. In fact, Biden got up and he actually said that. They didn't kill anybody. I will say that. They didn't kill anybody for 18 months. And you know what happened? His people start screaming, don't say that. No, they didn't. Because that's a good thing for us. But then. <laughs> no, it isn't. Because it was predicated on the idea that we would be out by a certain date or they would start killing again. When we left, we lost. It was, he negotiated a retreat. We lost soldiers, 13 killed. But what they don't talk about, they talk about the equipment, they talk about the fact that there are still to this day a lot of Americans in there that. No, there aren't. We've lost contact with. It's a N no, they're dual citizens in the opium trade. Rough place, but they don't. It's a rough place. Yeah, you could say. Talk about the fact that many of these soldiers were absolutely destroyed. Destroyed, they lost their arms, they lost yeah. their legs, 
They had their face blown off, and they were absolutely destroyed. And they don't talk about that. They don't. By the way, he's not talking about the ones that died. Talk about it. And it's name one. Name one. I'm not doubting that people were injured and horribly. It was an explosion. It was a suicide bombing. Name one. If I was telling this fucking story for three fucking years, I would have every one of the names of the injured memorized. Wouldn't you? If it really grinds on you, like this is the thing, right? This is the, you want to bring this up. He brings this up every fucking time that they don't even talk about the people that were injured. Well, then talk about them, motherfucker. Say it. Who are they? What happened? How are they? What are you doing post-presidency to help them in ways that the VA may not? Which the VA is doing everything for them. But even if you were making something, we bought them a house. Nothing fucking nothing this asshole brags about how they i'm the only one who talks about these people but in the most abstract way never mentions in them by individuals never does anything for any of them i honest to god like this riles me after a while because we've seen this so many fucking times he does this every time and it's the same language about it and it's you know, when he's talking about Abdul and random fucks and the Sir stories, who gives a shit? But when he keeps bringing up these people who are devastatingly injured in this suicide bombing and gives himself credit for bringing up the injured and then never names them or has assisted them or done anything for them at all, it's, it's just a particular level of disgusting. Uh, it every time he does it, it gets more grating on me. It's, I think. Uh, it's very sad because these people, many of them, we lost 13, they died, but nobody ever talks about the gravity of the injuries to these soldiers. And it's a very sad thing. I got it down to 2,500 people. Yeah, there are fucking numbers. He doesn't even know how many injured there were. He's not even saying there were seven of them that were you know, critically injured. There were three that were, you know, that lost limbs that, you know, are being rehabilitated. I went to Walter Reed or I went to the place in Germany where they were originally, you know, rehabilitated. I've talked to the family. None of that shit. None of it. He didn't do any of it. He, he only went to four of the dignified transfers at Dover. He stopped going after one of the parents yelled at him for sending her son into Syria and where he died. He's, he, he quit going. He sent Pence. And when he said earlier that he didn't want to tell the mothers and fathers about their dead kids, he meant it. Not because it was a sad thing or a bad part of his job, but because he didn't want to get the blowback. He took it personally because he's an asshole. I was the one that got it down, but we were going to get out with dignity, with strength. With yeah, again, show me the plan. Oh, God, I had a plan to get us out of there, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. We're going to get out there in limousines and drive out there in gold-plated airplanes mm -hmm. with silky curtains. Mm -hmm. You're going to be respected and, and admired. Again, how? By the way, and he'd already told us he, hasn't, he wasn't going to leave. And I could just see Abdul. They took out the soldiers first. You don't take the soldiers first. You take the soldiers out last. You get the Americans. We sent in 6,000 extra soldiers to facilitate the evacuation. Out first. 6,000. They feared our soldiers. They feared our soldiers. They feared the F-16s. And now they own them. No, they don't. Think of it. No, they don't. You get the soldiers. The Taliban have no pilots that fly F-16s. And they go out last. You take our... Hold on one second. I, like... One second. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. August 21. This is... 
try to find something. Let's see. Defense news. Okay. It didn't take long for photos of Paris Sergeant Major Talman posing with military helicopters. Black Ox and the group took a Mazar Sharif. More photos followed the time of Taliban with an A-29 attack plane. Now with the Afghan under Taliban, it's no longer the question of access to Afghan. Okay, so the Afghan planes. Uh, 167 planes and helicopters available for use in the Afghan Air Force. This is the this is the this is from Defense News. So far, the Defense Department has not confirmed how many of those aircraft have been captured by the Taliban, how many of that some are still operable, and how many aircraft have been f- safely flown by Afghan air pilots to relative safely in neighboring countries. During a briefing at the Pentagon, uh, Hank Taylor, Joint Chief of Staff, military Bradley phone him and said, uh, um, "U.S. military t- w- took steps." This is when they were evacuating. Um, Black Hawk pilot who served in Afghanistan said. Uh, there is no doubt they've captured hundreds of Humvees and artillery and other equipment and aircraft, um, not F-16s, by the way. These are the, these are the planes. They're, they're, that that is a Afghan A-29 pilot um, right there. That's a see that thing on the front. See this right here. See that right there. That's a propeller. I don't know if you know this, and and I guarantee if Trump looked at this, he would think it was an F-16. Um, F-16s, none of the F, uh, fighters have, are, have propellers. Um, let's see, uh, Afghan's Air Force infantry, A-29 Super Takano, a turboprop attack plane, a turboprop, as in propeller. Uh, unlike fighter jet built for speed and maneuverability in a dogfight, A-29 is optimized for counterinsurgency missions. Well, well yeah, we didn't give them dogfight planes because they were never the Taliban didn't have an air force, so why would you need F-16s for them or whatever? Uh, Uzbekistan's general air commander, 585 soldiers and airmen, officer A-29 attack aircraft requests permission to land on August 15th, uh, and we're given a MiG-29 escort to Uzbek military, but one MiG-29 and A-29 collided during the flight. The pilots of both aircraft ejected safely oh uzbekistan's prosecutor general confirmed that 22 unspecified military aircraft and 24 helicopters collectively carrying 585 soldiers and airmen flew into the country on august 14th and 15th um these are just helicopters and, and troop carriers on august 16th the office rescinded its statement in full providing no elaboration on how many afghan aircraft had landed into the country um and the only f-16s that i could find in the news were these U.S. flies F-16s over Kabul as Taliban reneges on Afghan peace. Like, our pilots are flying these, not Taliban. It's just, like, it's just fucking made up. It's just goofy. They do not have F-16s. American citizens out. You then take our equipment out. And Millie said to me, sir, it's cheaper to leave the equipment than it is to take it out. I said, let me ask you, General, so... We have a plane that costs $100 million brand new. You want to leave? Yes, sir, it's cheaper, sir. Also, no. He's not talking about the fucking planes. He's talking about the Quonson huts and the artillery and the old Humvees. They took all the airplanes. I thought he was, you know, another April Fool's deal, right? I thought, (laughs) I said, no, General, you fill it up with a tank of jet fuel. You fly it back home, or at a minimum, you fly it into Pakistan or some semi-friendly country, and you take it from there, right? No, sir. I actually told them I want the tents. You know, the tents have big canvas, incredible tents with the. I want every piece of steel. I want every screw. I want every nut. I want every bolt. I want every tractor. I want every jeep. Which means U.S. soldiers would have to go out in the middle of the Taliban fighting the Afghans and take planes, trucks, jeeps, artillery away from the Afghan soldiers during their fight with the Taliban on the way out. As the Taliban are moving across the country, Trump's big plan would be to send in as many U.S. service people as would be necessary to drive out all the vehicles through uh hundreds of miles of desert loaded with IEDs and foreign fighters, 5,000 of which he personally had let out of jail. You know what they did? They left 700,000 rifles and guns, 700,000. 
No, that was the use of rifles and guns throughout the history of the 20 years they were there. Many used, many destroyed, like some for the Afghans. They left 70,000 vehicles, 70,000, many of them brand new, many. No, none of them brand new. Many of them armor plated where they have six inches of steel in the bottom. Cost you millions of dollars to build. And they, yes, six inches of steel is very expensive. They left that all behind. There's not a car company, used car lot, new car lot. Any we, I mean, we do this all the fucking time. But um, Let's see. Um, images. Where is it? Uh, I just have to look up vehicles. One second. Mm -hmm. Find a picture of this lot. Um, Hold on one second. Um, is this government planet? Is that okay? It must include Vegas. Nope. Okay, so there is a. Mm, there's a. Mark, here you go. I don't want to show you that. There's, where's the picture of this fucking thing? It's going to drive me crazy. Hold on. Because um, I'm not going to drop it until I show you guys. Um, well, we'll just look at Government Planet. I'll show you. This will have to do because it's one of the sites that holds their stuff. Um, there is a, uh, place outside of Vegas, um, that is like fucking rows and rows and rows of Humvees for sale. You want a Humvee? 3,500 bucks. 3,500 bucks right there. There's a 2008, 3,500 bucks. 2007, there's a 1997, there's a 2008, 3,500 bucks. There you go. I mean, at this point, the cost, uh, like, that's so cheap, the cost of gas wouldn't run you up into the cost of the vehicle for about four years. You'd end up spending 20 grand on, on gas in about five years. And diesel after buying a car for 3,500 bucks. And there they are, by the way. This is, this is why he, it's cheaper to leave them. We don't, we've got more than, I mean, they're sitting there rotting here. There they are. Rows and fucking rows of them. Just outside of Vegas. That's just one site. That's just that's just here. By the way, hi, chat room. Love you guys. How are you? Hello. Um, good to see you. Man, there's a lot of people in the chat room. Lovely to see you. How much for one with doors? $3,500. You know how much one uh, with no doors? $3,500. You worked on components for Hummers? Nice. Well, if I end up getting one, uh, then I'll I'll let you know. I mean, it'd be great to get one and convert it to a giant electric engine. I'm just saying. Yeah, they can't give them away. And this and this dumb motherfucker wants to endanger the lives of soldiers to go pick up dead Humvees with no doors and fucking flat tires and 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 sand in the engine and fly them all the way back to Germany and then put them on a fucking boat and take them back to the United States where they can rot here. Anywhere in the world that would have 70,000 vehicles. I said to a friend of mine who's one of the Arigo in Florida, great guy. I said, how many cars? He's, I think he's like the biggest in Florida. 
They sold. They did very well. Thank you. But the biggest, I said, how many cars would you have? I don't know, a couple of hundred extra. A couple of hundred. And he's like, a big one, real big one. Run, runs a great operation. Seventy. He's talking about a single fucking car lot or maybe three car lots in Florida. A thousand vehicles. So now I read the other day that the Taliban. Over the course of almost 20 years. Band that Afghanistan is the second largest seller of arms anywhere in the world because they're selling everything that we gave them. And by the way, as a- Yeah, at cut rate prices. You want a, a US rifle? Yeah, yeah. Uh, never been fired, has never been oiled, only dropped once. I'm speaking, do I see cash? Is that cash? Oh, my eyes are better than I thought. You got cash? Ooh. And is that Rick Grinnell? Huh? Wow. Wow. You guys are wow. Sitting together. That's going to make news. Wow. Is that Rick Grinnell? I better check with Gordon. and I better check this audience a little more closely. I'm going to miss a lot of people in here. Jesus Christ. You, you, asshole, you know practically everyone. It's a shit turnout. Great. Two real patriots. They really are two great people. Thank you very much. Oh, my God. How much more of this is there? Okay. About a half hour. But they're the second largest to us. They're the second largest arms dealer in the world. They're selling off all the beautiful brand new equipment we gave them. To whom? They're not selling it to Russia, I guess, because those assholes are showing up with with uh, plywood cut in the shape of guns. The Apache helicopter, which is the best in the world. They gave one to Russia, gave it. They gave one to China. And they're very good. They take it apart and they reduplicate it. They, they take it apart and they reduplicate it. Also known as de-engineering. They take it apart. They reduplicate it. They reduplicate it. Twice. because they've never been able to build one like we have. Oh my God. And they still can't. Now they're able to do it because they're very smart. No, they can't. Smart, actually. Be they're very smart, actually. You know, for Asians or something. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, I will have the disastrous war between Russia and Ukraine settled. It will be. Yeah, settle it fucking now. Trade me right fucking now. And hang up. Settle quickly. <laughs> Then do it. Quickly. What does that even fucking mean? I will get the problem solved and... Yes. I will get it. What would that problem be? The Ukrainians? Solved and rapid. The Jewish problem of their president? Order. And it will take me no longer than one day. I know exactly what to say to each of them. I got along with very well with them. I got along very well with Putin, even mm -hmm. though I'm the one that ended his pipeline. Remember, they said, Trump is giving a lot to Russia. Really? Putin actually said to me, if you're my friend, I'd hate like hell to see you as my enemy. Because I ended the pipeline, right? Do you remember? Nord Stream 2, nobody... No, you didn't. Nobody ever heard of it, Rick, right? Nobody ever heard of Nord Stream 2 until I came along. I started talking about Nord Stream 2. I had to go call it the pipeline because nobody knew what I was talking about. Well, because it was already a Nord Stream 1, hence the name. But I ended it. It was dead. I told every company... No, it's dead now. That had sucked into it. That you. I. I'm sorry. How how did they do it? What what was the business again? Wait, give me one second. Um, how? how they go it? call it the pipeline because nobody knew mm -hmm. what I was talking about. Right. But I ended it. It was dead. I told every company that had sucked into it. Well, all right, sure. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know all this economic mumbo jumbo. I don't have an MBA, but I guess uh, that's how pe businesses start. People get sucked into it. That you're not doing business with the United States of America if you go forward and allow this to be built. It was done. On day one, Biden came in, and this is the biggest economic development project. This is the most important project that Russia has. On day one, this is the biggest money they could ever make. There's nothing they could ever do to compete with. Gibberish. They have multiple pipelines. This is the biggest pipeline in the world. Going to supply Europe, Germany in particular. On day one, Biden came in. And what did he do? He approved the Nord Stream pipeline. And then they'd say, Trump was soft on Russia. I was the one that gave 
A thousand javelins. That's the anti-tank busters. You didn't give it to him. You wait. Congress made him give those javelins to Ukraine. He waited to the absolute last second. He was trying not to give them. And, they and he was trying to do it in secret, by the way. That's why he had to do it before the end of the budgetary cycle, or there would have to be hearings about it, and it would have to go through the thing again, and everybody would go, wait, we approved these last times. Why did you stop them? They are vicious, because I looked at those tanks, and they ended up, they got hit one shot, and that was the end of that. that you wouldn't want to be in those tanks. But I was the one that supplied the javelins. They supplied the bedsheets, do you remember? They supplied the bedsheets. And maybe even some pillows from Mike, who's sitting right over here. Where the hell is Mike? Did you send some pillows over there? Maybe. But they supplied the bedsheets, they called it. We supplied the By the way, Carrie Lake is sitting there wearing a green dress. They're just tempting me with this, they? they didn't want to get involved. I gave the javelins. And then they say Trump was weak on Russia. Disinformation. Again, it's disinformation, right? That's all. No, Congress gave them. Congress assigned that money in those arms. All they're good at. He didn't request them. Cheating on elections and disinformation. Instead of spending hundreds of billions of dollars to defend the borders of distant foreign countries, under my leadership, we will defend our borders first. Three years ago, we had the safest border in the history of our country, and I will because of COVID quickly do that again. You're going to give us COVID again? Great, great. Okay, he's found the perfect secret. It's not the wall. The you know what's walls and wheels? They're so good, and they keep people out. But nothing works better than a pestilence. Read the Bible. <laughs> Disease, famine, pestilence. These are our friends. Don't be afraid. As you know, I built hundreds of miles of wall and completed that task as promised. And then I began to add even more in areas that seem to be allowing a lot of people to come in. So we're going to do another 200 miles of wall. And it could have been done and completed in three weeks, but the Biden administration. Wait, it took you years to do a couple hundred miles, but you were going to do another 200. The the Bidens could, well, I actually believe that. I think Joe Biden probably could build 200 miles of wall in a couple of weeks. I don't think you could. The said they weren't going to do it. And in fact, the wall was sitting there waiting to be installed. The easiest. Yeah, it was just, it's so sad. It was like, it was like a little wall flowered in eighth grade dance. The wall was just sitting there going, pick me, pick me. Part. And Biden, they took it away so that no. Texas and Arizona couldn't use it. Te Oh, the nerve. Texas and Arizona said, could we use that wall? We'll finish it right up. And they said no. And they actually took it away and they hid it. They put Oh, they hid it. Put it in a hiding area, which of course was. Well, that's a, well, that's if you're going to hide something. Yeah, I guess that's where you would put it is in a hiding place. Which was apparently right where it was. Reveal pretty quickly. All you have to do is send a couple of helicopters up. But they wouldn't let him use it. Under my leadership, we will. So it was a pretty, pretty shit game of hiding things. Gee, I'm, I'm starting to think that the, um, that might be why you haven't found any of Biden's crimes. Because if he had committed any, he would have just left them out in the open for anybody to find. And yet. We'll seal it up and expand that wall. We're going to seal it up. Yeah, that's the problem. People are climbing over it and tunneling under it because there's not enough caulk. Till we have total control. Till we have total control. That's not, but please, there's something about our side talking about 1984. <laughs> Look at this dude. That guy stands on everything. But we did a great job in the wall, remember, with Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell. Yeah, we'll give it to you next year. I said, nope, nope, give it to me this year. Well, sir, if you approve this budget, we'll give it to you next year. I said, all right, that's okay. So I waited, then they didn't give it, you know? And yet Mitch McConnell approves five. I thought Mexico was going to pay for it. Five and a half trillion dollars for Green New Deal garbage. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. You know, it is it's so disgraceful. Green New Deal garbage like roads and airports. But I took it from the military because I considered it an invasion. So. Ooh. 
yeah, that's not something you want to admit in front of these people, that they, you were actually manipulating the defense budget and you were taking money from the defense budget. I mean, some of these people do believe it's an invasion, so you're probably right that they'll buy into it, but not a good thing to admit. Mar it wasn't the Mexican military, by Jury, the way. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take it right out of the military because they're invading our country, and I got it built, and we did a great job. We did it quickly, and we uh, used the Army. Parts of it fell over. The Corps of Engineers, they were fantastic. Before. Oh, yes. And if the Army Corps of Engineers shows up and says, I'm from the government and I'm here to help you, obviously, they get a pass. Before Biden came into office, we had illegal immigration at a record low refuge. <laughs> because we had a contagious disease running amok. These were at the lowest level in history. Human <laughs> because everyone was sheltering in place. Trafficking women and children was at the lowest in 30 years. Yeah, but that's because Rick Grinnell prefers men. And drug dealers were finding the U.S. border a very inhospitable place to be. Well, yeah, that's why they largely use the ports. It was very inhospitable. During your administration and forever. In my last year, less drugs came through the southern border than had Less everything came through every border. Had been seen in many, many decades. Yes. More people weren't going to concerts and live events, so uh, the chances of having a place to smoke weed besides your own house, and God knows what the rules are. Some people, you know, they, they have to go outside, or they got a special smoking room, or the whole place just reeks, so nobody gives a shit. We weren't playing games. No, no, we weren't. We weren't. You're right. We weren't playing games. We weren't going to. We weren't going to see games. We weren't uh, shopping. We were all staying at home. Now we have complete chaos. Fenton. Well, I wouldn't say complete chaos. I mean. Super Bowl was pretty solid. Smell is pouring in. Families are being wiped out, destroyed. And there's death. Both? Everywhere. There's death everywhere? Oh, my God. Death has finally caught up with us all, I guess. I, I didn't realize. There used to be a time when there were just some places that were free of death. I don't know what it was. Certain counties, I guess, nobody died. It was like a Twilight Zone episode. All caused. You thought it was a blessing, but it turned out to be a curse. By incompetence. All caused by incompetence. Death by incompetence. It's on his death certificate. Millions of illegal aliens are stampeding across our border. Uh-huh. Then I, I think we should round up the cowboys. Then. Interior enforcement has been shut down. It has. Okay, so the ICE guys and the Customs and Border Patrol folks, they're just either not doing in their job or refusing to do their job? Weird. Everyone is overstaying their visas. Nobody... The nerve. I mean, but enough about Russian women having anger babies. Even thinks about reporting it anymore. Yeah, they don't even bother. Like, people won't even... Like, nobody will snitch on their Canadian friend for overstaying their student visa like they used to. Remember the good old days? What? My wonderful travel ban is gone. I had a travel ban. It was so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it was lovely. It was great. It was, uh, it was as beautiful as Melania's Christmas trees, drenched in blood. Refugee numbers are through the roof, and spies and terrorists are infiltrating our country, totally unchecked, like never before. When yes, it's like, it's like the Cold War meets the Manchurian Candidate. Also, pre-9-11 and on 9-11, every single day. And I'm back in the White House, the very first... You're, he's not going back. ...reconciliation bill I will sign will be for a massive increase in Border Patrol and a colossal increase in the number of ICE deportation officers. Officers. Well, I don't know why, because the country's going to be gone. I mean, it's happening right now. If we, yet you said if we don't do something quickly, well, two years isn't quickly. As as uh, as someone, sir, who um, apparently was with Stormy Daniels a, a a sum total of three and a half minutes, you should know the difference between quickly and extended periods of time. And I want to thank the Border Patrol. These are incredible people. Who stopped doing their job, apparently, because they were just demoralized by Biden's victory. And I want to thank ICE, and in particular, I want to thank Brandon Judd, Border Patrol, and Tom Homan, Central Casting. He's Central Casting.
Under my leadership, we will use all necessary state, local, federal, and military resources to carry out the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. Yeah, dude, they're going to, like, he wants, this guy is planning, and as he gets closer to the primary, he's going to talk more about this. He thinks he's going to do a door-to-door deportation of Hispanics and Central Americans and South Americans by going through border states, in particular, Arizona, Nevada, Texas, and just knocking on the doors of anybody who has a Hispanic sounding last name and scooping fucking people up. And, and that, you know, if you're a real American citizen, you can find your way back in from your country. You came here illegally from before, like it, this is just going to be fucking ugly. It's never going to happen, but other countries are emptying out their prisons. They're insane asylums and junkies. Insane asylums. I don't know. Again, how many asylums do? I mean, we don't have asylums anymore. Is Guatemala known for having a lot of mental, like, state institutions for the mentally incapacitated? And mental institutions. Okay. Great, yeah. Well, I'm glad there's. He makes the distinction. And sending all of their pro. So he said they're not only they're sending psychotic killers and murderers, but also people with OCD which is really irritating if they have to turn a doorknob 15 times before going through it. And then you're standing there. I'm like, I'm an American. Just go through the goddamn door. Problems right into their dumping ground. The USA. Think of it. They're yeah. Think of that. Think of it. It's like, a, it's like shit hypnosis. I'm like the world's worst Jedi. Think of it. Think what I just said, even though it's not true. Think of they're it. They're emptying out their prison. Picture this in your head, and then it's almost as if it's real. And you've heard me say that, but they're also emptying out their mental institutions. Yeah, yeah, and there's a huge difference. Again, it's not so much the, the psycho killers we have to worry about, because obviously they get distracted and start murdering people on their way off and uh, up and uh, often either uh, killed or hired by a cartel. It's those annoying, like, the anxious Guatemalans. Yeah. You know, like nothing's worse than a stampede of, of Venezuelans with uh, mild Tourette's and tardive dyskinesia. And uh, to use a strong couple of words, insane asylum, insane asylum. That's where anybody see silence of the lamb. That's where they come from. Insane. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, first of all, uh, how many people were watched the sexy liberal show where I did a, a Sans the Lamb sketch between Karen LeCaron and Trump? Uh, I may have to post it again just because he said that. Secondly, people know what an insane asylum is, dumb fuck. And they are not releasing their cannibal murderers and telling them, you're out now, walk to America. That's a stronger word than a mental institution. I see, I see. So you're saying it's the same thing but with a, just a stronger word because you wanted, somebody told you they're called mental institutions and you went, nah, sane ins uh, insane asylums sounds scary. And they're putting them into our country. Thank you very much. I will ask every state and federal agency to identify every known or suspected gang member in America and every one of them that is here illegally and the towns know who they are. The towns and cities are the police. We love our police. The police know who they are. The police know who they are, but they won't tell us. And we will pick them up. And we will throw them out of our country and there will be no questions asked. <laughs> or answered, as a matter of fact. If you just, if you're the wrong uh, Jorge Gonzalez, and you're not in a gang, you just happen to run a store in the neighborhood, but you know, you favor the guy and don't y'all kind of look alike. And so, sorry, we just got to scoop. It's president's orders. So just get in the van and uh, where are you taking me? <clears throat> Brazil. We have. Thank you. Some lady yelled, thank you. Get rid of them. Uh, a problem when I first assumed office in 26, it was a big problem. Yes, a big problem. You. Problem. We'd have these people. We'd round them up. MS-13 gangs, the worst people. These are 
absolute brutal killers. They used to knife 16-year-old girls because it was more painful. It would take longer to kill her. These are real animals. And uh, Nancy Pelosi says, how do you call them animals? These are human beings. I said, no, they're not. But these are real animals. And we couldn't get them back into their countries because the country... Oh, this, oh, this fucking bullshit story. This country didn't want them because they were Americans. Was like, especially three. You take a look at Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras in particular, and Mexico to an extent. You couldn't get them back in because they didn't want them. They sent them out in the first place. You know, they forced them into our country. Just so you know, these are very smart people that run these places. They're very street boys. So I said, what's the problem? Yeah, again, the idea that Honduras and, uh, and Guatemala especially are sending young men here just to be, I guess, agent enforcers of their gangs in the United States as an act of war, I guess. Is that what he's that? That's what that would be. So we have thousands of people. But they won't allow us to land the planes. They won't allow the buses to cross the border. They won't allow them back in their country. I say, how much money? The buses? When did buses become part of this story? Money do we pay to these various countries? $700 million. Sir, we pay $750 million a year. Oh, it went up. I say, all right, inform the country that we're no longer paying any money. And if they ask why, you can tell them. That. And yes, sir, we'll do that. So the following morning, almost simultaneously early, about 8 o'clock, I got calls from all three at one time. In fact, I had to tell two of them, I'll call you back. <laughs> this, again, this is just a lie. Just a lie. They all came in right on time, Matt. Right on time, like you call on time. And what happened? What the fuck does that mean? Is they came in and they called. They said, uh, sir, there must be a misunderstanding. We would love to have MS-13 back in our country. <laughs> and we started dropping them off by the- Oh my God, this is the same hack shit. Tens of thousands, and I still hadn't paid them back that money. I kept it. Figured, let's hold it as long as possible, because they've been ripping us off long enough. To stop the flow of deadly drugs, it will be my policy to take down the cartels, just as I took down the ISIS caliphate that everybody- Oh, you mean to 70% because Obama had basically finished it off, and you were like, Nah, that's enough. Let's get out of here. But he said was impossible to do. He's getting coke mouth right now. A lot of parents in this audience that lost a child, that lost a loved one to fentanyl and all of the drugs that are pouring in so many different kinds. Fentanyl is a big problem. In fact, with the ISIS caliphate, a certain general said, it could only be done in three years, and probably it can't be done at all, sir. And I did it in three weeks. I went over to Iraq, met a great general. Sir, I- Raisin Kane, uh, his fucking story. can do it in three weeks, you've heard that story. Yes, we have. We Please don't tell it again. I can do it in three weeks, sir. How are you gonna do that? They explained it. I did it in three weeks. I was told it couldn't be done at all, but it would take at least three years. Did it in three weeks. No. Also, again, ISIS-K is the active ISIS wing in Afghanistan. It is the group that set off the, the, the bomb that killed our service members at the airport. That was ISIS. So this idea that 100%, they're all gone. I mean, we know he's full of shit, but I would just like to tack that little piece of Backed information. Backed out 100% of the ISIS caliber. Um, we have a great military. The reason I say that, we have a great military. Not the TV and I will direct the other people. Blah, blah, blah. The Department of Justice to go after Marxist prosecutors' offices to make them pay for their illegal race-based enforcement of the law. Oh, by the way, uh, just in case you're wondering, what he means by race-based enforcement is he does not believe enough minorities are being prosecuted for, uh, um, for crimes. He thinks white people are, you know, because white people outnumber uh, minorities in the country and therefore by, you know, by volume, by number, the, there are more white people that go to jail and are, are prosecuted. But percentage wise, it's not that, you know, that number. And he he thinks that uh, that anybody, anybody who tries to remedy that is engaged in racist prosecution. They're trying to, you know, torment poor white meth dealers uh, at the expense of, I don't know, letting, you know, 
the Sam Littles of the world go through. By the way, we have one of those great generals with us, General Kellogg. Where is General Kellogg? Is he around here someplace? Where is General? He's in a he's in a bowl of milk. General Kellogg, he's the greatest. He's here. Thank you, General. Thank you. Thank you, General. And in cities where there's been a com my singing spray because my throat's still complete running. breakdown of public safety. I will send in federal assets, including the National Guard. And yes, the National Guard, which, of course, is Satan. Um, no, the this is, uh, by the way, just in case you're for the who's at home, for people keeping score. This is a small government conservative, allegedly um, arguing that he, as president, will send in federal troops into any city if he doesn't think that they are prosecuting local crime the way he thinks they should. Till law and because nothing says uh, small government like that. And order is restored. You know, we're not supposed to do that. And one thing I think about a lot is when we had some difficulty in certain cities like Minneapolis and where George Floyd's brother said that George wouldn't want this. And the, the day he said that, the riot stopped that night. If you take a look at Portland, how's Portland doing? They don't it doesn't exist. Rip Portland. Hashtag Rip Portland. So sad. It's just gone. I mean, there's nothing left of it. I don't even... I don't even have storefronts anymore. Everything's two by fours because they get burned down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it, the, whole, the, the whole state, the whole city... Portland is made out of just two by fours and plywood. The Starbucks looks fucking ridiculous. There's no glass anywhere. And it's always on fire. Every week, they don't put new storefronts up. It's no, just hip rip Portland. <laughs> fucking somebody tell Tara about this segment. Fucking hell. It's chaos. But it is chaos. Portland is chaos all the time. I mean, as much as as much chaos as a giant, you know, asteroid crater could be what we had in seattle remember they took over a large portion i was ready to send in the national guard they heard that more than the national guard i was ready to go to town and they what are you gonna do strafe bomb the fucking place i was gonna i was just gonna take off and nuke the site from air like ripley they heard that and you know what they did they said uh we're gonna break it up now they left bullshit had nothing to do with him two black kids in a white SUV were killed by CHOP slash Chaz security forces inside that fucking psycho zone. And they, they stripped the truck and dragged their bodies out into the street, stripped the truck so there would be no evidence once the cops went over it. That was the turning point. That got rid of the fucking CHOP in Seattle. But we saved Minneapolis. The thing is, we're not supposed to do... Did you really? I mean, I've, I, I, I don't believe it. I At this point... I've seen Fargo, and as far as I'm concerned, once Prince died, the, the kingdom fell. Hear that because it's up to the governor, the Democrat governor. They never want any help. They don't mind. It's almost like they don't mind to have their cities and states destroyed. This. Yeah, it's funny. Like, uh, shouldn't the president be like a king who can just order troops into any American city? That sounds like Republican platform material. Something wrong with these people. All of us have seen too many videos of 13-year-old carjackers and 14-year-old hoodlums viciously beating their victims. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, if that's what your uh, your uh, internet searches are, I, I would seek help. Actually, I think I would obviously be concerned by anyone who's beaten by a carjacker, regardless of their age. It doesn't get less painful, I suppose. So it just yesterday a horrible, uh -huh. horrible situation. Yes, I saw a video just yesterday from seven weeks ago, but it's like when you watch it, it's like it just happened. And then you watch it again. It's like, that's the second time today. Kill people without retribution because they may be days short of the age required to put them away, put them in jail and throw away the keys for a long time. My administration. <laughs> you throw away the keys for a long time. After a long time, we'll go look for the keys. But I honest to God, uh, you know, when we threw these keys away, it was just a field. Now there's buildings here and shit. Can we talk to the supervisor? I don't know what happened to these fucking keys. You throw away the keys forever. Or you put them under the jail. Like, we're familiar as human beings with all these colloquialisms, right? We'll crack down on these out-of-control monsters. Young though they may be and impose tough consequences on Jew. That's right. 
Matt Gates is our, our our point man for trying children as adults because if a child can commit a crime as an adult, they can certainly have sex. Right, Matt? Criminal, criminals. You know, criminals use young... Anybody who wants children tried as adults wants to fuck them. There, I said it. I... I gotta say, there's a reason why we know that brains aren't fully developed until you're 22, that 18 is, is what we choose as adult for voting and the like, 16 for driving, which is the closest thing to an adult uh, activity that I think they do specifically because you're in a car, you could run somebody over, you have to make life and death decisions or whatever. But when you're 12, 13, 14, nah. And anybody who says that I think they should be able to be, you should be able to put somebody who committed a crime at 12 or 13 or 14 in jail for the rest of their fucking life means you think they're mature enough to make sexual decisions as well. If they can make that kind of negative decision, they could certainly make a decision like, I'd like to have sex with Matt Gates." one would think. People. How about, how about, how about, fuck you. They actually, they actually hire young people, pay them some money, not a lot. Because if they get caught, nothing's going to happen to them. Okay. Gangs don't hire young people to do the... They, they recruit children and through threats and intimidation and money. And by the way, they'll, they'll give you money. But if you try to... If you want to stop taking the money, you're fucking dead which you might not understand at 11, 12, 13, when they just ask you to run a bag down the street and you don't know what's in it. Like, don't look in the bag, but here's 20 bucks if you run it down the street. And then the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. And then eventually they can just threaten to fucking murder you. Jennifer, thank you so much. Um, Oh my gosh. I wish you all the healing in the world, Jennifer. And hugs and and blessings upon you. I don't have the... I wish I had faith healing powers. I don't think I do. But at the very least, if I can just keep you smiling, I feel like it'll help. I'm just throwing that out there. I hope so. Anyways, blessings to you. And um, and William O'Connor, thank you um, for partying with the Super Chat that's like 1999. And uh, Diana Turner, I heard today that Russia is using shovels to fight. Oh, there, yes, each other. Matt, we'll talk about that with Philip on Wednesday. That will end. I will end the scourge of homelessness taken Scourge, motherfucker. It's pronounced scourge. Jesus Christ. Over our cities and so. The scourge of homelessness taking over our cities. Suburbs. I just drove and suburbs. through Washington, D.C., coming here for the first time in quite a while, and the roads and highways were littered with trash like I've never seen before. It looked like somebody just... That's no way to talk about your supporters. They come all that way and stand there with signs. Took their garbage and just threw it all over the highways, the beltway. It's so disgraceful, so dis... The highway, the beltway, the shoe way. Disgusting. I always made it a point as president when I saw the highways were dirty or that the homeless encampments were starting to form to take care of the problem immediately. I used to have people out here all the time, sweeping highways, cleaning highways, hosing them down. What the fuck? (laughs) What, 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 what are you, what are you talking, hosing down the highways? Uh, I don't even, how do you, where in the, why, why did you run on that in 2020? Maybe you'd have won. What the hell? It bothered me so much. I'm in the beast. I'm being driven back to the White House from some site. And I was like, hose that down. Sweep that. Hose. Hose. I was just yelling hose out the window. People totally mistook. And the next thing you know, uh, there's like three of them in the car. And I was like, not my point, but thanks a lot, Rick. See this filthy, dirty highway with... with Paper that hasn't been, you could see it's been laying there for months. Oh, it's a sad part. You know, it's worse than trash all over the highway. Old trash. 
and I'd have them cleaned up. I wouldn't even call the mayor because it was never going to get done with the mayor. Frankly, the federal government should take over control and management of Washington, D.C. Look, Marge was the first one to stand up. She thinks that would give her the ability to free the Jan 6 prisoners, for the record. Good project. Good, good project. We should do that. That should be a thing for Republicans. We should do total takeover. Not only should we take over Washington, D.C. completely, the federal government should control it, but I, as president, should be able to send troops into any state. What? How is... How are Republicans standing up for this shit right now? Oh, I forgot, because they live soulless, meaningless lives and none of their ethics or morals that they espoused for years actually have any meaning to them whatsoever. Gotcha. Because okay. it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. It's so horrible. And I think of it differently. Foreign leaders come in to see us. We want them to do what we want them to do. Whatever that is cartwheels in a skirt. And they drive through these terrible, disgusting streets where their streets are much better. Much are they, though? Much better maintained, much nicer. And uh, they see Which ones are we talking see about? See camps and homeless all over our beautiful, once beautiful parks, all over. Hundreds and hundreds of tents. I used to have them taken down immediately. I'd see one or two or three. I said, do it fast, immediately. Then I'd check, and it was done. They'd never have time to do. Once they have 500, 600, 700 of these things up, it's a much more difficult thing. Yeah, I agree. If you have a park with 500 or 600 tents in them, I guess, yeah, it would be difficult to, uh, to find a place to live for that many people. 500. How big are the parks in fucking D.C., for one? But you can do that, too. You could totally do it too, just a flamethrower and some bear spray. Under our leadership, we will take the homeless, drug addicted, and severely deranged, get them off our streets, and create 10 cities where we will get them the help they so desperately need. Oh, they're going to create. Oh, he, all right. He's going to create 10 cities elsewhere, I guess. Where would that be? Good Lord. Why are you applauding for tents? I guess the idea is that if you build buildings for them, this is probably where they're rooted. If you build buildings for them, they'll stay. But yeah. On day one. Yes, concentration camps. I, I, I don't give them any idea. And I will revoke Joe Biden's crazy executive order installing Marxist diversity, equity, and inclusion czars in every federal agency. And I will immediately terminate all staffers hired to implement this horrible agenda. This is a affirmative action run amok. And by the way, is that guy over here like, okay, Jim, whenever I'm done, come over and stand so I know when to leave. Oh, there's another one on the other side. So they. Yeah, I will urge Congress to create a restitution fund for Americans who have been unjustly discriminated against by these Biden. White reparations. I shit you not. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> this motherfucker is talking about, and I don't know if anybody else has bothered to notice or have said it in so many terms. He's talking about white reparations <laughs> fucking hell. policies they're so unfair they're so oh so unfair so un-american they're so un-american they're so un-american to give everybody a shot like that you know and we will ban america is a crab bucket where everybody just crawls up over everybody else and if you got here first you you know if you got here second you get a foot in the face all racial discrimination by the government <laughs> Diana says, I wonder what uh, Trump will look like with bracelets on. I got to tell you, um, they're going to, it'll be an ankle monitor and he'll be allowed to stay home because he plays sick and he'll shave his fucking head or, you know, like he'll show up half blind like Cosby. I will fight for parents' rights. Can you believe that here we are and I'm saying I'm going to fight for parents' rights? Who would think that you have to ever say parents' rights? Don't you think parents have pretty good rights, right? 
Who would think that you have to actually say it? But you do because they took the rights away. Which ones? What, what, what rights? Including universal school choice and the direct election of school principals. Right, yeah. Your, your right to not use public education, but be paid by the U.S. government to do so. Principals by the parents. We want this. I want to be paid to, to homeschool my child. School principal to be appointed and elected by parents. Yeah, that won't be chaos or anything. And you'll get some good principles then. No, you won't. Who loves the children more than the parents? Um, well, their own, sure. If and by the way, Mr. Never Changed a Diaper thinks, you know, dealing with babies is woman's work. Any principal is not getting the job done. The parents should be able to fire that principal and this, they can. They can petition the school district already. Immediately and select someone more. Immediately. What would be the standard? It's it's the McCarthy standard. One parent ob objects, we, uh, objects, we immediately will have an election. Continue. Yeah, school will be fine. It won't be a site of just ongoing QAnon chaos everywhere throughout the Midwest. The work of our 17... And the 76 committee. And weird little neighborhoods in New York. We will teach our values and promote our history and our traditions to our children. We will, in other words, be proud of our country again. You're not proud of your country. You, you like a mask version of it. I'm proud of my country. I'm proud of America. But I can do that incorporating all of its history, not just part of it. Because I think the growth part is what makes it great. These motherfuckers want to pretend that the growth didn't happen and that the any lack of greatness that's caused by that, you know, is it, that that people complain about in in regards to the growth that was needed is them attacking the country at its root worth. That's because they're a bunch of delicate fuckers. I saw, by the way, on a side note, I saw David Jolly today on um on Deadline White House, and he made a really good point about Fox not calling, you know, they, in the inner, uh, the New York Times has an article about the internal conversations that happened about calling Arizona and then the rest of the race for Joe Biden. And they literally didn't want to do it because they were afraid of hurting the feelings of their viewers. And it occurred to me at that moment, like, this is the fuck your feelings network worrying about upsetting their viewers with the truth. The kidney. Hmm. Kidney. Guy. I will revoke every guy point. Guy. Every Biden policy promoting the chemical castration and sexual mutilization. Mut mutilization. Mutilization. How are you? This is right now the, like, this is the issue for all maggots right now. Is, is the idea of children transitioning. That this, they think, this harkens back, goes back to the gay agenda and all this kind of stuff. But they believe that the gays are going to try and trans their kids. They'll still let them use TikTok. <laughs> and ask Congress. But it's the Democrats that want to. Is to send me a bill prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. That should be easy. That should be easy. It's so easy, I, I don't know why I didn't think about it before. And we will keep men out of women's sports. Right? See, these are the, li listen to the cheers. This is the single biggest thing. These aren't economic issues, any of this stuff. The one fear nerve that's left with this particular crowd is that. That's it. That's all they got. If the, if the Biden administration or Congress in general were to put forward a bill 
that references true trans people and a pathway for them versus people who, you know, might be caught up in something or, you know, the, the idea that they can watch a bunch of TikTok videos and think they're trans and that kind of stuff. If you put a bill in place to just try to deal with that mitigating factor, it would fuck their whole argument. It would fall apart. And this is it. This is not something that will drive everybody to the polls in two fucking years. This is it. This is the biggest issue. Listen to the sound into that crowd. <laughs> Listen to That is the single biggest like, like, applause. How ridiculous. And by the way, yes, another huge, giant government issue. Like, he's like, parents should have the rights to do whatever. But if a parent tries to take their kid who they believe is trans to, you know, be able to get the help they need to transition, the federal government wants to step in and stop them. I mean, it's hilarious. That will take place on day one. I will destroy the illegal censorship regime and bring back free speech in America, because we do not have free speech. How? How do we not have free speech? Oh, right. You want child porn available on all internet sites with no checks and balances. And, and uh, ISIS to be able to post their magazine and, and uh, snuff videos from the Taliban and that kind of stuff. You mean that kind of free speech? Like, you should just be able to see all of it, right? I mean, if, it, if it's, you know, with words, if all of them aren't free, then none of them are free. And I will stop Joe Biden's demolition of our economy with his crushing inflation. Yeah, you're, that's yeah, not going to be a thing. And mass layoffs. We will take care of mass layoffs. We're, we're like, dude, we got 516,000 jobs in January. Inflation very, very quickly. 4.9. Because it will already be handled by the time you're in office, if you do and you won't. Million people have dropped out of the labor force since. During your presidency. Since I was president. Mm -hmm. As the Trump administration's great Larry Kudlow. Does everybody know Larry? Yes. Especially the guy who runs the liquor store bodega on his block. As Larry Kudlow said, and the one outside of Fox News, Biden is setting a record, and the one near the train stop record on economic regulations that are absolutely killing American companies. Yes. Yeah. There's none of them are succeeding. I don't know if you know this. Nobody's making money in the United States. It's terrible. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know if you guys know how poor you are. Um, but it's worse than you think. Um, and you don't have jobs and your bosses don't have jobs either. And your companies have already collapsed I, weeks ago. Um, and it's just going to get worse. His spending and his borrowing are at record levels. This dude literally gave us a third of our national debt. It's causing historic inflation, sir, which is only going to get worse. And worse. It's interesting. So does Biden get to tell sir stories now with this fucker being the the heel in them? Worse, he's, sir, he's he just called me before I got, I said, I don't want to say this, Larry. It's only going to get worse and worse. It's driving. It has to. Otherwise, I'm never going to get elected. Unless this place goes to total shit. Bring up interest rates and new cars and homes are going to be impossible to buy. Amidst this economic disaster, Biden talks about saving you a few dollars on some junk fees. Don't mean anything. Don't mean anything unless you're a Swifty. That's right, Swifties. He just told you Taylor Swift doesn't mean a thing. Mm hmm. You just gonna you just gonna take that from this guy by defeating Joe Biden? What? Don't don't get me started on how he feels about K-pop. Biden, I will save your economy. I will save your retirement accounts. I would use the word savior over and over again for myself. And I will save your jobs. We're the greatest job. I am savior. I am your savior. I save your jobs. I am your savior. Up history of any president ever. I will create a true national trade policy like the kind that made America the world's economic powerhouse. What? Oh, oh you're going to go back to when we had child labor and uh, the, like the industrial, like the Rust Belt was running nonstop, just polluting the atmosphere and everybody was coated in fucking smog. Coal plants were running full steam. You mean that? That era? We were doing. Yeah, I mean, it's way, 
why modernize? Why why take us into the future with technology and and AI and all that kind of stuff when we could just go back to the old ways? Prior to why don't you you know I would get make sure that every Chinese person has a job laying train tracks for fuck's sake. The dust coming in from China was nobody's ever seen it. There's never been anything like it. That period of two and a half years was there's never been anything like it. And I'll tell foreign nations where we wait the dust. The kind that made America the world's economic powerhouse. What we were doing prior to the dust coming in from China. The dust. It's dust. That's what it was. It's it's not even contagious. You just you don't need a you don't need a vaccine for that. You just need a lint brush. Nobody's ever seen that. There's never been anything like it. Well, obviously the Spanish flu and the tuberculosis epidemic, and of course the Black Plague. And that period of two and a half years was. There's never been anything like it. And I'll tell foreign nations where we. You mean the year during your, the last year of your presidency, and then the first year of the Biden presidency up to half of this year. spend billions of dollars on military protection that if American products do not receive preferential treatment in their markets, our military is packed up and leaving. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's a it's just a protection racket again for for our corporations. We're now the, the U.S. government will now be an enforcement mechanism for the trade desires of corporate entities within the United States whether or not they are good for national security. Which some countries I did that with, and usually it took a phone call and everything was just... Yeah, like Ukraine. It's fine. Because economic security is national security, I will revoke China's most favored nation's trade status immediately on day one. It's going to be over by the time the primary comes. It is, I'm telling you. Like, we're already... We're teeing up to that point. Like, they're going to lose that. Uh, effectively, it's being held in case they try to encroach on Taiwan. That would be the day one thing. That's one of the, that's on the list. It's one of the reasons why Biden uh, allowed the Nord Stream 2 to go forward. So he had something to jerk away if they decided to go for Ukraine, which is what they're talking about. Otherwise, they were already fucked. So why, why not attack? And I will the dust in implement the a four-year plan to phase out all Chinese imports of essential goods and gain total independence from China. We have to do it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Again, what the fuck does that even mean? What, what, Ivanka's products? Christ almighty, has he been keeping track? Nobody has. No one is keeping track of what the Biden administration is doing in terms of China. Nobody, except me. And the guys at the China show who are doing an amazing job. We have to do it. We got to do it. We got to do it. A thing that we're going to do. I'm going to do, you know that thing Joe Biden's already doing that I could have done that I didn't do? I'm going to do, I'm going to do that after it's already been done. That's good, right? That works. I will hold the kidney. China financially accountable for unleashing the China virus upon the world. I will send over bombers and nuclear tip submarines to claim pieces of China in exchange for the $40 trillion they owe us. <laughs> what does that mean? How would you do that? What does that entail? And I will again withdraw from the WHO, which stands for we hide outbreaks. We hide outbreaks. The United States was paying. I think this is important because, again, it's so much common sense involved. The United States was paying the World Health Organization. For, by the way, never mind the one, you know, the, the outbreak from China and the mistakes made around that by people who, uh, you know, kind of laid back during it. But do you think this asshole has any idea how many almost pandemics don't get off the ground because of coordinated efforts 
by the by the by United the United Nations and the World Health Organization working together. So you have any fucking idea how many get tamped down before they can spread? Four hundred and fifty million dollars a year. Right. And without those, we'd have had a dozen fucking COVIDs. Here. Now, in terms of money and... And SARS and MERS and... The kind of trillions and trillions we're talking about. It's not that much, but it's still $450 million a year. And I took them out. That's what it was. The price was 450 And that's for 350 million people. China was paying $39 million a year for 1.4 billion people. 300 some odd million of which are in abject poverty. There are more people in, in, in total poverty in China than there are human beings entirely in the United States. Doesn't sound too right. And they had doesn't sound too right. Had total control, by the way. We had no control. They literally own it. No, they literally don't. When I withdrew from the WHO, they offered me to stay in, please. By the way, one of the problems the WHO had with China is the same problem that states in America during the pandemic had with Trump. If you don't kiss their ass, they won't give you the access needed to save other lives. So you have to pussyfoot around their bullshit to have access to any information at all that you would use to save lives elsewhere. If they don't give you that information, people will die. And if you just roll in there and go, fuck you, show us what you got, they'll shut the door and that'll be that. And more people will die. The same thing happened with people who, you know, governors of states who had to address this fucking fool when he was in the White House, tiptoeing around his goddamn ego so they would have enough PPE for their own people. They had to tell him he was doing a great job. He kept bragging about how many people told him he had, he was doing such a great job. Even these governors, they would say bad things and then they would turn right around on the news and say he's doing great stuff. And then they would complain to us because they were lying. They had to like puff up his fucking ego on the news or he would deny them life-saving materials. Don't leave, please, please, please. For what China pays, they said, we'll bring it down to 39 million. Also, like these little like plays he makes up in his head for what happened with other people are fucking ridiculous. He was actually close to doing this deal, if you want to know the truth. But yeah, it was almost up. Yeah, it was up. Yeah. I would have had a, you would have been angry at me. I said, I don't have, I don't want to have CPAC angry at me. Wait a minute. What deal? Back the fuck up. And I took them out. That's what it was. The price was 450 and that's for 350 million people. China was paying $39 million a year for 1.4 billion people. Doesn't sound too right. And they had total control, by the way. We had no control. They literally own it. When I withdrew from the WHO, they offered me to stay in. Please don't leave. Please, please, please. For what China pays, they said, we'll bring it down to 39 million. I was actually close to doing this deal, if you want to know the truth, but I would have had a, you would have been angry at me. I said, I don't have, I don't want to have CPAC angry at me. <laughs> but I'm. All right. So he would have funded the WHO at an equal amount with China, cu cutting security and, and transport funds and investigative funds the world over. Uh, he would have cut it down to equal to what China was putting in and still stayed in the World Health Organization. And I like, I, OK, let's I, let's be honest. I don't believe this fucking story at all, but let's go with it. But he decided rather than um, hedge his bets for one fifth of the money, he decided I, I would rather be popular with some dickheads at the at this particular conservative political action group. And so I uh, fucked the world. I'd have gone back in, but I could have done it for 39. I could have probably done it for less than that. But. But uh, I, I don't know. I've never read The Art of the Deal. Somebody else wrote it. Now Biden has gone back for the full price of $450 million. Now, all he has to do is read the newspapers. They were begging me to come back in for $39 million. So why would you pay four hundred? First of all, where he is this the first we're hearing? About this, hold on. So, uh, WHO, Trump, 
39 million. Um, oh, sorry, WHO. Um, Thirty nine million comes up a lot as a number with him. It's interesting that it sticks because on the one hand, uh, the State Department um, backed the thirty nine million dollars worth of uh, javelins that were going to go there. But also Donald Trump made thirty nine million dollars running the, his failed casino. Which in terms of like if you look at people like Steve Wynn and shit like that is fucking nothing. But I don't know anywhere, let's see, WHO, Trump, uh, membership. Uh, so he says it's 400. Um, yeah, he says that Biden got back in for 400 million. Let's see, was it, let's go back to that again. 50 million. I could have done it for 39. I could have probably done it for less than that. But now Biden has gone back for the full price of $450 million. Now, all he has to do is read the newspapers. They were begging me to come. U.S. will pay WHO more than $200 million in membership fees withheld by Trump. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said they will pay $200 million it owes to the World Health Organization by the end of the month. Also grief for his counterparts as one of his first ex-president. Uh, Biden rescinded President Trump's decision to withdraw. Um... Let's see. United States, what does they have? An, they have an overall number. Trump said he had suspended U.S. funding pending a review. I see, pending the review, which never happened. China has total control of the World Health Organization. Forty billion dollars you compare to the United States, pay four hundred fifty. Um, blah blah blah. The problem is not about the money; it's about financing. That's the issue. That's it. Yeah, that's it. This is. Uh, I mean, we were, wait, so it's been suspended since the end of 2020. It is now 2023. This is, uh, or no, this is last year. So it was 200 million in that year and change. So it's half of what he says it is. Right. Okay. Back in for 39 million. So why would you pay? $450 $450 million. He's not. Do you understand that? Gordon, you understand that? How crazy. So China's in for 39. They're saying, you're right. It's unfair. It's unfair. We will do it for 39. We will take you back. The head man. You know who that is? Who? Name him. The head man. He's told this story dozens of times. We will take you back. Then I started to say, actually, it should be much less. It should be like five or six million, right? But I didn't want to go there. We will take you back for 39 million. You're right, President. You're right, President. That's a, that's a weird mental tick. I said, well, we'll think of Who the fuck talks like that? that? We'll see what happens, but the offer will remain open, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They went back in for the original amount. It's so sad. And we have no control about it. Well, because it's not a membership fee, you dumb motherfucker. It's not a golf club. It's so that we can monitor diseases the world over. It's funds that go to saving that just because China has a lot more people and doesn't care as much as we do to fund the WHO to stop pathogens does not mean we stop funding pathogens. By the way, as the country that's the biggest pass through of of foreign business interests and, and, and foreign visitors of any country on fucking earth. By the way, China controls WHO. So no, they don't. That's what it does. Do- no, they don't. They had to pay play fucking footsie with the with Xi Jinping to try and get as much information or as little information as they possibly could during a pandemic. That does not mean they are owned. They are dealing with the reality of an administration of a of a regime in China that is intentionally manipulating the world's uh, media and uh, foreign governments for their benefit during a time when they fucked the earth. WHO is totally controlled by China. We could by China could have saved. 
$400 million a year. It's a lot of money. And now they're asking for even more dictatorial power and more and more and more of our money, but they're getting nothing more from China. When we're dealing with the Biden administration, it seems that every single day is April Fool's Day. No, we're do- don't tell me we're doing this whole fucking shtick again. <laughs> every day. April Fool's. He floated this. Remember this at that stupid rally? They want an open border so that anybody can come in. No, they don't. And everybody else wants it to be closed. It's April Fool's. Everybody else wants it to be closed. April Fool's. Fuck. Man. We want an open border. That's April Fool's. No, it isn't. That's, this doesn't make any sense. We want voter ID. They don't want voter ID. Sure we do, as long as it's free. But at the minute the state charges for an ID that's necessary to carry out one of your rights, which is voting, if you need it, here, here let me put it in terms that, that the maggots might understand. And by the way, I got to jump in here and say hi, chat room. We're getting near the end of this. And thanks for hanging out. Holy hell. Some of you guys have, have been in for the long ride, and I appreciate it. Um, th- yeah, it's, yes, for one, exactly. It's a poll tax if you have to charge people for this ID. But imagine this, let me, if they don't give a fuck about voting. Imagine having to have a U.S. ID to have freedom of speech. And you had to have an ID that worked in every state. And some states could decide that another state's driver's license would not be, would not qualify as an official ID to have all the rights as a, an American citizen in their state. To prove that you are an American citizen, you would need more than a driver's license. You have to carry around your birth certificate all the time, or you would need a federal ID to do it. And you would have to pay whatever fee it costs in your state to, to have an ID. That's And by the way, uh, that also applies to gun sales. You need an ID to buy a gun which means they have already put this rule on the second, the rights in the Second Amendment. Imagine putting it on the First Amendment, that you have to have an American ID to have freedom of speech. If you're not here, you're, you're here from another country and you're not a citizen or you're not a resident alien or, a, uh, or you, know, you have permanent resident status or something like that, you do not have the rights of a, you know, of a full citizen. And if California decided, fuck Texas, it will not accept Texas's ID, then you would have to get a California ID so that when you're in California, you have freedom of speech or you get throw, be thrown in jail for whatever you say, which different, by the way, from other Americans who live in California and have that ID, which in which case you would need a federal ID. These motherfuckers be clamoring for a free federal ID available to everyone. But they also think it's the mark of the beast. So yeah, it's a papers please law. Who wouldn't want voter ID? Anybody who believes you shouldn't have to pay to vote. 88% of the Democrats, except for the leadership, because they can't cheat with voter ID. But 88% of the Democrats want voter ID. Yes, we want a national federal ID card that works as a passport and a, an ID in any state in the union. That is free. To every citizen as a right of citizenship, as proof that you are an American citizen. And nobody gets charged for it that's an American citizen because their rights are predicated on it. And and Republicans will never go for it because they think it's the mark of the beast. But they don't want voter ID. It's April Fool's Day. Again, he I don't he thinks this is his big closer. They want to take this was a this was a fucking dud in the middle of his speech last take time. Take the soldiers out of Afghanistan before we take our people and equipment out. But we want the soldiers to come out last. Also, what the fuck does that mean? So then they we want the soldiers to come out last. Blow it into a catastrophe, the most embarrassing event in the history of our country. Mm-mm. I'm going to go with slavery, but okay. It's April Fool's Day. No, it's not. I don't even think he fucking knows what this means. Somebody set this up. He thought he said this in passing 
and he's like, we should just, this will show them how crazy the world is. They want all electric cars that don't go very far. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Electric cars have 350 mile ranges now. It's normal. They're getting in the area of 400. Have you seen the fucking Rivian? It's gorgeous. There's one in front of me in traffic the other day. I was very jealous. I have a friend, he bought a car. He said, the car's wonderful, but you know, I'd go for an hour and a half and I gotta put a charger and I can't find the charger. I'm going crazy. <laughs> yeah, eight years ago. And also all the batteries and everything, the material comes all out of China. No, it doesn't. We have oil and gas, but we don't want the oil and gas cars. But we want everything including electric cars, but we also want gasoline because the cars go longer and they're preferred by many people. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, cigarettes used to be preferred by many people too. Unfortunately, the people who preferred cigarettes oftentimes would end up taking up hospital beds that were better used on people who were in accidents that weren't their own fucking fault. We don't like quick drives that are stopped for two and a half hours. It's April Fools. They want all electric stoves all over the country, but we don't have the electric power for that. What? And we want electric stoves, but we also want gas stoves. It's April Fools. Why do I, seriously, this is, the, this is the hill to die on. Why do they want that? Why do they want? They went, we should have electric and gas, or gas and electric. Who cares if the gas stoves in houses cause asthma in children? And, you know, that what, what happens if they end up doing a study on these things and they label them and they let people know that a gas stove in the child's developing years might be bad for that child if they're standing in front of it nine hours a fucking day? That, you know, uh, we might, you know, that they, uh, it's not a good thing. They want windmills all over the place that which give cancer to bald eagles. Ruin our fields, kill our birds, and are very unreliable. They are. They're so unreliable. Unlike combustion engines and, yeah. And are the most expensive energy ever developed. We want oil, gasoline. Mm. No, I mean, there's startup funds necessary for all new technologies. But I will say the long game with wind is that the wind will always be blowing. In natural gas, because it's cheaper, better, and much more powerful, it's April Fool's Day. It's April Fool's Under Day. Under my leadership, we will regain energy independence. On April Fool's Day. That we had three years ago, we were on our way to massive energy dominance. We would have been paying off our debt because energy is big numbers. It's not like you're selling a little product. You're selling the biggest product of all. It's energy. We oh, God. He's got to be winding We would have been paying off our debt. We would have been the strong. Motherfucker, you gave us a third of our debt. Oh, you know. You gave us a third of our we debt. We were going to be. We're all a third of our debt. A third of it. 30%. On your watch. 30. 30%. 30% of the national debt happened under Trump, 30%. Already bigger under my administration, bigger than Saudi Arabia or Russia. We were going to be much bigger than both of them combined. By the way, one of the reasons why he hammers this, just so you know, is because while the debt was stacking up, he was like, oh, fuck, how are we ever going to pay this off? And his people came up with, well, the only way really to do it is oil and gas. We got to, we got to, crack open Anwar. As a matter of fact, the higher we drive the national debt up, the more we can scare people into letting us open Anwar. Within guarantee it about a year, we would have made the kind of money they're making times five. No. And we would have been paying off debt and we would have been reducing taxes and it would have been a beautiful thing. It, what were you going to do? Nationalize the fucking oil like Venezuela? But they came in and they said, we don't want that. Yes, we don't want to choke off our rivers and streams and poison our air. And uh, yeah. I will fight for a constitutional amendment to impose term limits on members of Congress. That's the Matt Gates thing. That's why Matt. Yeah. 
and, and the Senate, because Chuck Grassley's got to get the fuck out of there. And I will move heaven and earth to fully and finally secure our elections. All re- After you get elected under an election that you say is not secure. Republican governors should immediately go for paper ballots, one day voting, and voter ID. One day voting, and then all you got to do is crash your trucks in the right areas and open fire in the right neighborhoods, and you could mute the vote in any part of the country. (laughs) And by the way, I'm fine with that because... The red, all the red states would do is collapse their fucking voter rolls. Do you think they have shitty representation now? And the problem we have is we have governors, and some of them we like, and some of them we don't, but they're all talk. Think of it. They control the state. And we have... No, they don't. A lot. They have legislatures, too. They have constitutions. They don't control the state. These aren't fiefdoms, you fuck. A lot of governors... They should go for that. Diana Turner says, this is so sad. It absolutely is. Paper ballots, same day voting. You know, France had 37 million people voting. They voted in one day and at 1030 in the evening, they called the winner. There were no problems. They have paper ballots, same day voting, voter ID. And they only had a little mail in. Mm -hmm. And we would have this too. For soldiers that are very far away or people yeah, if they're, if they're marginally far away, fuck them. Let them get in a car and drive from Germany. That are legitimately sick. <laughs> legitimately sick. Not this bullshit cancer nonsense. Okay, legitimately, as opposed to millions and millions of ballots flooding the offices. They used COVID to cheat. They used COVID to cheat. But until that day comes, Republicans must compete using every lawful means to win. That means swamping the left with mail-in votes, early votes, and election day votes. Right, there he's got. Okay, so we need to have one day voting, and that's it, and Republicans need to do this immediately. However, everybody in the red states should also do early voting, which I've just told the governors to stop doing. Everybody in the red states should, you know, should mail in their vote, and and governors in red states, you should eliminate mail-in voting. This is so fucking dumb. You know what this is setting up? You know what this will set up? And it will happen in the primaries, I have no fucking doubt. But if he ever makes it to the general, same thing. There are going to be massive numbers of Republicans, maggots in particular, voting two and three times. Because they have been told, look, if they're going to cheat, we're going to cheat. And that's that's what happened to a bunch of them last time. And it's going to be even worse because this has just gone off the rails. We have to change our thinking because some bad things happened, you know. Yeah, totally bad uh, things. We like, for some reason, Republicans like to vote on election day, right? Yeah, some reason. I don't know. Maybe they don't. I mean, maybe because I told them that's the only good day to vote and they don't trust mailing in because they think their their vote's going to go in a shredder or something. The problem is you get there and they have so many already started. But worse, if you take a look at... So many already started. He means Democrats have already voted. Carrie Lake in Arizona, where they waited and waited. Don't vote now. Wait till Tuesday. Wait till Tuesday. Wait till Tuesday. And in the Republican areas, a tremendous percentage of the machines were broken and you couldn't vote. And they had lied. Okay, first of all, uh, no, they weren't. Um, the, there were tabulators. Nobody had a line more than 45 minutes. Everybody got to vote. They didn't get to tabulate there on the spot. Didn't change the outcome of the fucking vote at all. And secondarily, why is it that if, if, if why is the lesson from this that the Democrats went, just like rubbed their hands together and went, all we have to do is kill the machines on voting day because none of these motherfuckers are voting early. How is that? And again, at a certain point, isn't it your fault? Lines that were a mile long. No, they were not a mile long. All over the place. Repu- no, they were not miles long, uh, a mile long all over Republican the place. Republican areas. And they couldn't. And they weren't just Republican areas. Vote. They said, come back in seven hours. They did not say, come back in seven hours. Nobody was told, come back in seven hours. Not a single fucking person ever said at any point during the Arizona senatorial or governor's election, come back 
in seven hours. Shut the fuck up. But people can't do that. They have little league. They have doctors. That's right. They have little league doctors. And sometimes some of their doctors are playing little league. And sometimes, you know, they're in little league and they're playing doctor, which I find wrong. But still, they might love Kerry. They might love the Republican Party and everything. But they haven't. They If they're told to come back in seven hours, they'll go. OK, I'm coming back in seven hours. We stand for, but they can't do that. They can't come back in seven. I can come back in three and a half. No, double it. Shit. And they were standing in the hot sun for hours and hours. No, it's so sad. In Arizona? And then they sent in mechanics. You'd think they'd be used to To it. fix them. And when the mechanics left, they were far worse. Yes, the mechanics came in and just pulling wires up at her. Oh, Jesus. Look at that. That's just terrible. Fucking, uh, where, is it, where does this doohickey go? Anybody know what? Shit, that's a piece of fun. Hold on a thing. I got it. I got it. This is the one with the votes on it, right? Anyways, clang. And they and bullshit. This is all bullshit. Lose those cases in courts because our judges have no courage to do what's right. They have no courage to do what's right. No, they have no courage to do what's right, which is technically to tell these assholes to go pound sand, but they sit there and they listen. That's right. I can tell you that was the case in 2022, where we can't get rid of drop -off. 2020 also, you might want to clarify, since there was an election in 2022. Mm. The kidney. Boxes. We need them in every church. What we have to do, we have to Yes, we need drop boxes in churches, especially right-wing, evangelical, lunatic, flashpoint churches where everyone is trustworthy. To put our own drop boxes in. Zook yes, our own drop boxes. Partisan drop boxes. Zuckerbucks um, spent 500... Zuckerbucks, listen to that. Dropping the old Jewish slur right there, right out of Mike Pillow's book. Did million dollars, and you know, if you... Two states to spend however they need to evenly allow for drop boxes. More of those drop boxes went to black areas and impoverished areas because that's where they had been previously denied, not because they directed those funds or those drop boxes to go to those areas. There were fewer than needed in those areas. You contribute 5,007. Oh, this is the same shit Mike Pillow said. $100. He's just repeating Mike Pillow's. One dollar more than that. To a candidate, they put you in jail. This guy gave five hundred million dollars. Four hundred. For all of this crap that they were doing, shenanigans. They were handing out the money like it was candy. No, no, no. Unless candy comes in terms of it comes in wire transfers to Secretary of State's offices. And that's fine. But if it is, it is fine to hand out money like candy. Somebody when people are going to jail for spending like. $93 too much. No one is. Because it's not according to election law. Yeah, no one's going to jail for spending $92 too much. And until we can eliminate ballot not harvesting, we, we need to harvest as many ballots we'll as we can. We'll become masters at ballot harvesting. <laughs> it's illegal and, oh, for fuck's sake. We have no choice. We have no choice. We're just going to have to do it. Beating the Democrats at their own game. That they don't play. And we'll do Hey, it's the, the asshole who dresses like the wall, which is a slat fence and is not made of brick, but... Oh, well. Do it legally. The agenda I've laid out today will end... Well, if they can do it, if you're doing it legally, then it can be done legally. Then it's not illegal. So all your complaints that Democrats were l illegally ballot harvesting are horseshit, which means 2,000 mules was bullshit. America's destruction. Which it was. But it is not enough just to stop the forces tearing America down. I want once again to build America up. We have to- With an infrastructure bill? Oh! Build our country. We don't build anymore. <laughs> no, we don't. That's why construction jobs are through the fucking roof. All we do is investigate everybody. You ever see television? You know- yeah, I've seen television. It's that, it's that thing in the living room, right? It used to be, we'd <laughs> build our military. We were proud of it. We'd be doing all things. Would be all you see on thing. Invest 
Yeah, we would do all things and blah, blah. investigation, investigation, investigation. Now, with that being said, you got to look at Hunter. I mean, how crooked is that deal? But, you know, it's not something I really I'd like to not do. Any, I'd like to get back to building our country and making our country great again. But it's time to start talking about. Well, you had four fucking years. Where was the infrastructure bill? Greatness for our country. Our objective will be a quantum leap in the American standard of living, especially for our young people. How? As I announced yesterday, we will hold a competition to build new freedom cities on freedom cities, the frontier to give countless on the frontier. On, on the, f he does know this is, this is an 1823, right? It's Americans, a new shot at home ownership and the American dream. It's such a. Yes. Move out to the sticks far away from the cities where the, the, those weird people are. Wonderful, beautiful. Girl. Wonderful, beautiful. The frontier. It's lovely. I don't know if you've seen it. It's good. The frontier. It's, it's so so good it's way better than the back team and i'll challenge the governors of all 50 spates F 50 spates yes 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 all 50 spates on the ownership frontier. and the american dream it's such a wonderful beautiful girl. Mm. yeah and i'll challenge the governors of all 50 spates all the 50 spates all 50 states to join me in a Great beautification campaign. We will rename our schools and boulevards, not after communists, but after <laughs> Yeah, which was the plan. After great American patriots. And uh, just so you know, uh, the people he talks to on the regular think MLK was a communist. <laughs> just... To be clear, because you're going, what the fuck? That the fuck. We will get rid of bad and ugly buildings and return to the magnificent classical style of Western civilization. As opposed to all these ferner looking buildings. We will support. Ba uh, wait a minute. What buildings is he talking about? Like. What classic art, like the Twin Towers? Baby boomers. And we will support baby bonuses for a new baby boom. How does that sound? That sounds pretty. I want a baby boom. I want a baby boom. Uh, by the way, when Trump says baby boom, that means he filled his diaper. I want a baby boom. Baby go boom. Oh, you men are so lucky out there. You're so lucky. You are so lucky, men. Our country will shine, thrive, and prosper like never before. Yes, especially with all the jizz everywhere. All of this is within our reach, but only if we have the courage to complete the job, gut the deep state, reclaim our democracy, and banish... Impregnate our women, build our cathedrals. ...the tyrants and Marxists into political exile forever. They are bad for us. They want us to fail. They want our country to go down. Mm, terrible. They are sick people. Uh -huh. Change. Yeah, I, by the way, uh, Putin wants that and so does she. Just, I'm just saying, next time you cozy up to him. Remember. It only happens if we plow fearlessly ahead and declare with one voice that the era of woke and weaponized government is over. Do we have to say it in harmony or is it just just repeat those words? On our own. I think it's scarier if we all whisper it. The area of woke, something or other is over. <laughs> kind of like, we are the children of the corn. That is our task. That is our mission. And this is the turning point and the time for that decision. Because as you've probably heard me say before. Oh, believe me, we've heard you say all of this before. We will not back down. We will not bend. We will not quit. We will. Um, by the way, uh, you did back down. You did quit. You lost the presidency and you moved back to Florida. We will not yield. We will press forward with 
push. We will press forward with vigor. Hold on. We will press forward with push. We will not quit. We will not yield. We will press forward with push. <laughs> okay. That's a, that's a sound bite. We will press forward with push. We will press forward with vigor. We will push onward and we will finish. Oh, there was that. We will push onward is that he skipped a line and went straight to. Yeah. Finish what we started. We started a great, great positive revolution. Nobody's ever seen anything like it before. Yeah, because it was that dumb. It's called Make America Great Again. We want to make America great again. Who's going to do that? Well, why won't they just let me do it? That's all I want to do. I mean, I do want to make life hell for a good portion of Americans and make minorities feel unwelcome. And, and of course, uh, basically start an overall trade war that will gut the economy of the United States and, and uh, splinter us like, you know, Europe. But, you know, but well, that's all I want to do. We will cross the finish line. We will dismantle the deep state. We will demolish woke tyranny and we will restore the American Republic to all of its radiant glory. Radiant glory. And with God's help and your support, we will make America powerful again. We want to have a powerful country. We need to have a powerful country. We will make America wealthy again. America, especially compared to the world right now, pretty fucking wealthy, just saying. We will make America strong again. That's what we want. We want strength. We want strength. We will make America think of your heart pounding. We will make America proud again. We will make think of your heart pounding America safe again, not like our streets of the cities where you can just get hit with a baseball bat while you're being stabbed as you get carjacked while being shot, which are a disgrace for the entire world to watch. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much. CPAC. Thank you. Thank you very much. Man. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. By the way, he's still playing. Uh, hold on, I'm coming. Thanks so much. Now, there you go. Squirt, squirt. Clap, clap. Point. Clap, 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 clap. Okay, okay. Oh, God, I'm tired. You. What's going on? Hey, you. Oh, yeah, you, you. Hey, point, point. Hi. Hello. There you go. Clap, 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 clap. I'll just stand here while they clap, 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 clap. Yep, everybody dance now. Smack, 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 smack. Do it all night. Smack, smack, clap, 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 clap. Just have like like the sound of him. Thank you. Bye. Okay, that was a lot. Okay. Okay. All right. There's no one. It's hard to even. I'll turn around one last time. Clap. Oink. Oh, hey, you. Okay, see you later. Okay, I'm done. This might be the last time I do this. I gotta think about that. Uh, okay, I gotta... Okay, all right, fine. I'll just stand here while you look at me, you monkeys. Look at you. You just, you disgust me. I can't stand any of you, and yet you show up every time, and I am nothing without you. That was it. That's We made it through the whole fucking thing. Holy shit. God damn, that was tiresome. Ugh. Um, bless you, those of you that stuck around, those of you that had to bail early, I completely understand. Tomorrow's show, um, I have a backlog of other shit that wasn't this, but we did it. We stuck to our raison d'etre as the show, we made it all the way through. Another one for the 7.30, shit, I've been on for four and a half hours. Whew, that's like a real live stream. What are you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? All right, I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to go eat something. I love you guys. Thank you guys for hanging around. Appreciate you. Hold on one second. Let me say one last hoorah to, uh, there you go. Uh, there you go, chat room. Love you guys. 
so much. You had naps during it. Oh, well, bless you. It was a marathon. It certainly was. But yes, the stage looks like hanging balls. We know this. Um, <laughs> um, be well. Thank you guys so much. Bless you. We made it through the whole thing. We in, no no one can accuse us of taking things out of uh, context. We did the whole shit. Ugh, God. Anyways, bless you guys. Love you. See you tomorrow. Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. All right. Whew.